two and ten a year ago and had a 26 game losing streak snapped in 2010 now in the second season under Willie Taggart as he turns the reins over to his offense Willie Taggart of course uh, a coach that's had a lot of experience came from Stanford a couple of years ago worked under coach Harbaugh out there and uh, your thoughts about where Western Kentucky is headed under Willie Taggart well I like what he's done he's come in and really instilled in this program what he went through he was a winner at Western Kentucky and he went back to what kind of went old school with the guys brought in a new defensive coordinator and Lance Gidry this year that's worked well as this Hilltopper defense forced to three it out that handoff goes to Bobby Rainey we'll talk about Bobby Rainey a lot tonight because Bobby Rainey is one of the special treats in college football and you may not know about him but he finished third in the country a year ago in rushing he led the nation in carries and he is just a little guy believe it or not he's 5'8 200 pounds he's a senior but he will get the ball a lot says he likes to come downhill and that's what this new West Coast offense of Western Kentucky provides him it's an, the ability to come straight downhill towards the line of scrimmage here's a little toss to Rainey he's into Kentucky territory and picks up the first down in the process Martavius Nellums with the tackle that's a gain of nine for Mr. Rainey well you look at him Dave and, and you really don't think as you mentioned his size that he can carry the football as much as he does but he led the nation in carries and for for yards from scrimmage in terms of running the football only LaMichael James and Jordan Todman had more yards on the ground than Bobby Rainey carries carried it 28 times a game on the average that's outstanding those numbers are impressive 15 touchdowns as well Kwan Jakes will throw incomplete looking for Rainey he had an eye on K1 Jakes and warm up and it's a guy who can really spin the ball had most of his career he has been a spread quarterback in the shotgun and he really had to adjust to going under the center in this new West Coast offense that we'll talk about quite a bit but uh, getting used to taking snaps dropping back reading coverages as you drop and then getting the football out on time a big adjustment for K1 Jakes second down and 10 here's Rainey he'll get it to the 42 yard line three yard pickup little scrum a couple of players tangled up about the 42 yard line looks like there might be a fumble in the process that's what Kentucky's indicating our officiating crew led by Mark curls says that it will be Hilltopper football and what a block and for Rainey to have the success he's having watch the fullback right here and Winston guys a pretty good football player that's going to come into your screen watch this block 270 pounds and a pancake block by Kadeem Jones the fullback that's why Bobby Rainey can have the type of success he has running the football third down let's call it seven Jake's hit and dropped back at the 47 yard line Luke McDermott from his defensive tackle spot forces a five yard loss and here comes the Hilltopper punting unit he was the leader in sacks coming back Luke McDermott he had three sacks as a defensive tackle and a good inside pass rusher gets the uh, offensive lineman's hands off him quickly and then he's on to the quarterback nice job there by Luke McDermott Kentucky only 21 sacks a year ago that was tied for 10th in the SEC under new defensive quarter uh, coordinator Rick Minter they're hoping to get a little bit more pressure on the quarterback here in 2011 Hendricks breakfield to punt it away it bounces inside the 10 and into the end zone so each team has had the football nothing to show for it we are scoreless here at LP field in Nashville the Wildcats and the Hilltoppers ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods every season starts at Dick's and Nissan proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. 
Made with real ingredients cooked right in, for flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. I don't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm looking at it and I, I don't believe it. How did you, I mean, if you're here and at least we have Farm Bureau insurance. Because there's one in every county, Kentucky Farm Bureau agents have seen, well, almost everything. Your mother always said you were gifted. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So me and the boys earned a trip to D.C. twice as fast. Oh, hi. We get double miles every time we use our card. And since double miles out of fast, one more chariot, please. We can bring the whole gang. I cannot tell a lie. He did it. Right. It's hard to beat double miles. Read my lips. No new access. Get the Venture Card from Capital One and earn double miles on every purchase every day. Go to CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? So you're a Democrat, right? We'll be here if you get off early. Is he working the late shift again? Yep. Hey, you made it. Power outage. That's the third one this week. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings Beer Sports. Oh, that's my boss. Saturday, the stage is set for a big year in Tallahassee as Florida State suits up against Louisiana Monroe. And head to the swamp for Muschamp and Weiss's coaching debut in Florida. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins at noon. This is Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. And welcome back. The LP Field here in Nashville. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano, glad to be with us. Morgan Newton and the Wildcat offense back on the field for the second time. And obviously, when you lose the likes of Mike Hartline, Randall Cobb, and Derek Locke, your quarterback, your all everything, and your running back, some people, somebody's got to step up. These are the three guys that are going to be expected to be big time playmakers. We'll get Andre's thoughts on those three guys and if they're capable. In just a moment, we'll toss sweep to the right side. Nothing happening there for Raymond Sanders. Gain of about a yard, but Andre, somebody's got to step up and, and make the play. Well, you're asking a bunch because you're talking about three big-time playmakers, especially when you talk about Randall Cobb and uh, Derek Locke, guys that could hit the home run at any second. Going to be a little different approach for Kentucky this year when you talk about the running back position, especially Raymond Sanders certainly doesn't have Derek Locke-type speed. So it may be a more methodical approach for Kentucky this year. A couple of tight ends and another play off the right side. A gain of three this time. So that'll bring up another third down. Xavius Boyd from his linebacker position makes that tackle. There is Joker Phillips now in his second season as the head coach. Six and seven a year ago said he's tired of just going to a bowl game. He wants to compete for an SEC East crown. When you look at, at Kentucky, Larry Warford, their right guard is the guy that's down. Now, they're, they're starting the game with a couple of backups already. In the middle, Matt Smith, he didn't start tonight with an ankle sprain. Jeff Lenevsky is starting at center, as well as Kevin Mitchell, a left guard for Stuart Hines, who sprained a knee early in August. So now it's an offensive line adjustment big time. The three guys in the middle. And talking to Lance Guidry, the defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, he felt like... An SEC team, big offensive line with experience. They're going to line up and try to come right at us. Well, I'm not so sure now when you start talking about the three inside guys on that offensive line. Well, Stuart Hines just checks in, Andre. You mentioned the sprained knee. Did not get the start tonight. Expected to be one of those bell cows up front for Kentucky. That was, you know, obviously the the point of attack for Kentucky. I mean, that was the brightest spot on their offense was their offensive line. And usually he's on the left side. He's a left guard starting at left guard. Now he's moved over to the right big time for Kentucky. Third down, we'll call it five. Newton out of the shotgun. Fires and intercepted at the 32 yard line. 
Vince Williams with the interception. Boy, this was just thrown up for grabs by Morgan Newton, junior quarterback with some experience, ought to know better. Plenty of time, good pocket, step up, and he just kind of floats this one over the middle, looking for Jordan Miller, the tight end. And what a nice break on the football. Setting up Western Kentucky in some pretty good field position here. And this was where you could ill afford to turn the football over, Dave. This part of the field. Talking about Western Kentucky now, they have the momentum. You know what I like to do on a turnover? Go to the end zone on the first play. Defense kind of frustrated having to go right back on that field. So the Hilltoppers will have to call timeout. Willie Taggart not happy. He did not have the right personnel on the field, and he is chewing on somebody's ear. But how about Lance Guidry's defense? His first year as a defensive coordinator for a club that a year ago gave up 33 points a game, 177 yards on the ground, over 200 yards through the air. Uh, not a horrible defense, but yes, certainly they have made some strides under Coach Guidry here. At least that's what we can see early on. And where they want to make the most improvement, sacks. They only had 12 sacks a year ago. They've been able to get in the face of Morgan Newton, not able to get him down quite yet. But they've been there, frustrated him, closed the pocket or condensed it a little bit and forced an ill-advised throw. And it resulted in an interception. Big time turnover. They were plus three in the turnover margin a year ago. It didn't result in wins for them. A lot of close losses. They would like to have that swing in their favor this season. Yeah, Western Kentucky, four of their six conference losses by seven points or less, including two one-point losses. So first down and 10. Here's Jakes. Steps up, fires, has a man just off the fingertips of Marcus Vasquez. He was there, and Andre nearly jumped out of his seat. <laughs> well, I love attacking a defense, especially after a turnover. You go for the juggler, so to speak. When you have a guy, you see the play action here? Guy wide open, just set it out there and let him run under it. He has coverage beaten. The turnover, as I mentioned, the defense frustrated, having to go back on the field. And Marcus Vasquez, boy, he missed an opportunity there for a touchdown. But now it's second down and 10. Here's Jakes. He'll roll out. That pass is caught just shy of the first down marker by the freshman Bo Brand. A gain of eight and a half, and that'll set up a third down and short now for the Hilltoppers. Mikey Bitten on the coverage. All 144 pounds of Bo Brandon. We asked, is that an accurate figure? Yeah, six foot, 144 pounds, but he's quick. A 3A prospect, a three-star prospect out of Bradenton, Florida, Southeast High School, good football player. So on third down and about a yard and a half, it'll be a three tight end set for the Hilltoppers. Jake's under center. There goes Rainey in motion. They'll hand it to their big up back to Dean Jones. He gets the first down and then some. How about seven yards on the carry for the young man who's 5'11", 270 pounds. Well, I'll go back to that block that he threw on a guy like on Winston Guy. And they're going to reward him for that. He didn't have a carry last season. But in this new offense, the fullback's going to be important. You block, we will reward you. And there, short yardage, they go to the big fella. Fresh set of downs now for the Hilltoppers. Trying to strike first here at LP Field in Nashville. Here's Rainey dancing around. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Danny Trevathan, who led the Southeastern Conference in tackles a year ago, steps up to make the play. All conference, all everything. Danny Trevathan, a speed linebacker that can make plays. As you mentioned, 144 tackles a year ago. He had three sacks to go along with it. He's a guy that contemplated leaving early. He's a senior, thought about the NFL, and decided to come back to Kentucky for a senior year. Said he had one foot out the door, but he promised his mom he'd get a degree. Boy, Rainey met at the line again and driven way back. A loss of one. No flag, and now some pushing and shoving going on. Yeah, and and I, I'm surprised that the officials did not throw the flag there. 
Whistle's blown, he gets thrown to the ground, and then you're gonna get this big pile up because Western Kentucky player's gonna take care of their bell cow, Bobby Rainey. And that right there is a surprise that the official showed some restraint not throwing that flag. Look at Winston Guy leading that push. He was another guy that thought about heading off to the NFL. But he moves over from a corner. Or actually from a safety position and Rick Minner the new defensive coordinator kind of pushes him up closer to the line of scrimmage He's almost playing a linebacker role now in this new scheme. Well, you were right because he started his career as a corner He moved from corner to safety from safety to now Linebacker to as you mentioned get more speed and quickness onto the field and he's a tremendous football player third down and a dozen Whistles on the field. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Now it's not automatic with the field goal kicker for Western Kentucky. Only six of 15, 40% a year ago, along of 47, he had one blocked. So they've got to take care of field position here. Started this drive in excellent field position, moved and got themselves a first down. Now they've got to take care of things because it is, it is not a gimme field goal attempt. It would be about a 41 yarder if they don't move the football here on third down and now 17. Here's Jake's little shoulder fake going up top. Hilltopper fans thought that Vasquez might have been held by Randall Burton. No flag on the play, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Well, we talked to Rick Minner. And he told us Randall Burton's the guy going to be into the short side of the field. And they're on the right hash. That's the short side. So you're going to draw the best receiver in most cases. He's their shutdown corner this year. And there with excellent coverage was Randall Burton. Well, here's Casey Tinius, the senior out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, from 41 yards out. Snap is good. The hold is good. And the kick. Is really good. So the Hilltoppers take advantage of the Kentucky interception and they take an early 3 0 lead here at LP Field in Nashville. 6.40 to go in the first quarter. Toppers out in front. Running backs don't stand in line. We run through them, especially when Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong. Ah! Nike Pro Combat. I forgot my wallet, Steven Jackson. Take every advantage. Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong at Dick's Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. Most legroom per dollar of any car in America. The all-new Nissan Versa sedan from 10990. Innovation upsides. Innovation for all. It only took two minutes for this town to be destroyed. To a little girl who lived through it, this is more than a teddy bear. It's a step towards normal. It's why all state catastrophe teams not only have hot coffee and help for grown-ups. They've also handed out more than 12,000 teddy bears to kids. People come first. Everything else is second. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? I'm a conservative, but I don't vote along party lines. I just want my family to be secure. I'm not a follower. I'm my own woman. Financial consultants should be as independent as the clients they serve. Independence is what it's all about. I, I can afford to be independent now. That's why you should consider the personal attention of a Hilliard Lions financial consultant. I wear white shoes when I want to. Hilliard Lions. Investment insight for every generation. We are in the Music City. It's a hot night, but a gorgeous night to be 
hanging out here at LP Field as Western Kentucky and Kentucky play on here in the first quarter. Daniel Andre Ware and Kara Capuano, who's down on the sidelines. Let's check in her with her with her right now. Kara. Well, guys, there's a real contrast in the energy level on these two sidelines right now. Kentucky's depleted. They felt good about only allowing three points to Western Kentucky, but the offensive sputtering and then the turnover, there's not a lot of energy on that side. On the other hand, for the Hilltoppers, Willie Taggart is running a pro organization over here, actually had his offensive line stand behind the bench just in case I was listening in on any secrets while they were plotting their second possession. <laughs> They're on to you, Kara. They Boy, know. Coaches are so, you know, they just, they think everybody is trying to steal secrets. It amazes me that they call plays and they hold a play chart in front of their mouth so you can't steal the play. Well, you got to be pretty good to steal the, the, the uh, play call and then get it into the defense in time. Well, Kentucky will get the football back here as Jesse Roy with another kick. This one will settle into Winston Guy. Winston bounces off one red jersey and falls forward to the 21 yard line. Saturday night in primetime on ESPNU. The Will Muschamp era begins in Gainesville as the Florida Gators host Florida Atlantic. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock Eastern time right here on ESPNU. Well, so far, so good for Lance Gidry in this defense. They wanted to tackle well, avoid the big play, and then get penetration, and they've been able to do pretty much all three here early in the football game defensively. Morgan Newton under center. Morgan 0 for 3 with a pick. Quick hitter to the outside. That is incomplete. Looking for Matt Rourke, a big target at 6'5". Let's take a look at, at Morgan Newton, the new quarterback at Kentucky. A little overthrow there, maybe some jitters, but then this one, you can't do this. Trying to force the football into the middle of the field late. The result is an interception. It led to three points for Western Kentucky and a bunch of momentum. Plenty of time on the play clock, just hits 10. Kentucky, a team that does a lot of check with me. In their offensive system, here's Newton bouncing off a couple of Hilltopper defenders. Finally dropped by Andrew Jackson in the middle, that middle linebacker the Hilltopper coaches are so excited about. Gain of four. Well, it's really learning the offense and then getting from a bad play against a defense to another one. And basically, your two plays called in the huddle. You kill one to get to the other one. And he's gotten extremely good at doing that, so much so that they rely on him to do it. Mike Hartline was basically the expert at doing it for Kentucky the last couple of years. They're comfortable now with Morgan Newton in the same role. Saw T. Martin on the sidelines along with Andre Woods and a couple of good quarterbacks in their time. Newton dropped back at the 18. A flag is down. And Andrew Jackson will get credit for the sack. Loss of five, and that looks like a hold coming up against the guys wearing the white jerseys. Holding it's be number 52, offense. Filters decline, fourth down. Billy Joe Murphy working against Bo Adebayo, the right defensive end for Western Kentucky. And you'll see it right there. It's on the right side. He's getting beaten. Just took him one hand to the quarterback. Oh, what a nice pass rush there. There is Andrew Jackson, the sophomore middle linebacker, idolizes Ray Lewis with the same high school as the Raven intense. linebacker. I wanted to meet him yesterday, and I did. You talk <laughs> about intensity. He was ready to hit something, just didn't walk through it. Did Lotch get a punt it away? It is a high kick. John Evans makes a fair catch back at the 37-yard line, a 43-yard kick. Well, the Hilltoppers certainly have a lot of momentum early. They lead it 3 nothing. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins at noon. We're in the mood for amazing seafood tonight. Pan seared just for us. Anybody? You know, seasoned with shrimp and scallops. Perfectly seared tilapia made to order. On an all-you-can-eat dinner buffet. For around 10 bucks. Heads up. Only good.
Golden Corral would serve up endless made-to-order pan-seared seafood. It's incredible shrimp, tilapia, and scallops with your choice of amazing sauces. All on our endless dinner buffet, still for around 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Bam! Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. Start your college football Saturday with ESPNU's tailgate. At 9 a.m., Aaron Andrews and the College Game Day crew are live at the Cowboys Classic in Texas to get you primed for Oregon LSU. I'm going for the yes! At 10, a special gridiron edition of Sports Nation. Oregon will smack you six times before you even know what hit you. And at 11, take a high-octane road trip to the best matchups around the country with Whip Around. ESPNU's tailgate kicks off Saturday at 9. Nobody serves up the U.S. Open like DirecTV. With more live coverage than anywhere else. Featuring the Mixed Channel, playing up to six matches all on one screen. Get interactive schedules and results at the push of a button. And see select center court matches in stunning 3D on M3D. It's available for free in partnership with ESPN and Tennis Channel. The U.S. Open experience begins August 29th only on DirecTV. Okay, here's your room key. The crib is already there. Great. Thank you so much. We provide great service so you can stay you. Holiday and Express, stay you. Today's trivia question, what's the hardest play in baseball? The unassisted triple play. The unassisted triple play. Stay smart and book smart. Book early and save up to 20% at any Holiday and Express. Stay you. Andrew Jackson, the coaches say he's going to be an awesome player. He's displaying a little bit of that skill right now. But let's go back to that last sack and how did it develop? Yeah, it was it was Quintarius Smith, actually, their defensive end, working against Billy Joe Murphy. And you'll see it right here. Watch the power rush, just the right hand. And he takes Billy Joe Murphy all the way to Cam Newton with just one hand, which allows a couple of other Western Kentucky defenders to get in there. And it's actually Andrew Jackson finishing it off with a sack. Hilltoppers have the football. And here's Rain. He breaks a couple of tackles and he is bumped out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. Let's give him a gain of seven. Once again, let's check in with Kara. Guys, just to finish off on the defense, we've heard so much about defensive coordinators. Lance Guidry's energy and as soon as that possession was over he ran back high fived everybody and said gentlemen that's three battles that we've won they're over let's try to win the next one so he's trying to keep the defense a little focused we'll see if they've got that when they come back on the field and Lance Guidry a guy that was the interim coach at Miami of Ohio last year in the GoDaddy.com bowl and picked up a win heck of a speech heck of a pre game speech out of the eye formation on second down and a couple of yards. Here's Rainey. Hits the hole and gets near midfield and a first down in the process. And a late flag comes in as there's been quite a bit of pushing and shoving going on between these two clubs since the opening kick. It was back in the secondary, about five or seven yards away from the football. Mark Curls, our referee today, about to step forward and fill us in. After the play was over, personal foul, number 48, defense. 15 yard penalty out of the end of the run, first down. And big Ridge Wilson, the outside linebacker for Kentucky, and that's big. It's hard to see why Bobby Rainey's pretty good. You know, the first guy that gets to him, you can forget about making the tackle. You just better hope two guys show up or someone else with, along with you because you're going to grab at air, and then he's right back down the field. North and South. First down and 10 as the penalty moves it all the way down to the 36 and a half yard line. Here's Rainey, steps outside. Well, he's got that little dead leg he uses, and guys just can't seem to hold on when he, they get there. He giveth and he taketh away fast. <laughs> And another flag down right and looks like it's right in front of that Western Kentucky bench. Boy, Dave, when you run the football the way they have here early with Bobby Rainey, look out for the play action. Holding number 32, offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of foul, replay first down. So now Big Kadeem just cost himself 
a carry. Actually, he's checking out of the ball game. Got to go talk about it right now with Coach Tagger. So Kentucky gives Western Kentucky 15, and then Hilltoppers keep, give them 10 back. Keep an eye on the big fullback here. And sometimes you just got to let that jersey go. Guys slipping away from you, you got to turn him a look, turn him loose. So now you're looking at a first down and 18 as that's a spot foul. A little of the West Coast action. You're getting a look at Willie Taggart's offense. A couple of guys were moving around and got out of sync and Willie Taggart not too happy about that. Well this is what happens when you install a brand new offense. Remember they were spread before Willie Taggart got there. Now they're West Coast so you get a lot of movements a lot of shifts things that go into the West Coast system and the first game of the season. I, I actually like the timeout by Kaiwan uh, Jakes the uh, the quarterback here rather than take another penalty for an illegal shift you call the timeout get everybody together and then go back at it but you're going to have this in terms of first quarter jitter so to speak. Obviously a new season Andre we've been talking about it all year. Let's start with uh, some Heisman hopefuls as we get this season kicked off like all four of those guys Andrew Luck Le Le Michael James I throw Marcus Lattimore right in there with those guys of course some notable coaching changes will Muschamp as everybody's wondering what the Gators are going to look like this he's closed everything down since he's been there Brady Hope trying to make a difference at uh, Michigan and Dana Hogerson at West Virginia I'm excited to see them play here we go tall sweep Rainey on first down and 18 he gets the corner back to the original line of scrimmage and he is pushed out of bounds on the far side as he picks up eight maybe nine yards you were trying to pry his 40 time out of him yesterday and he didn't bite he's going to make you wait till he's time for a pro day but he's got enough speed and you see the little dip right there inside if you bite on it he's got plenty of speed just with a little hesitation to get the corner and he's out and by everybody. Nice little 10 yard gain. Once again if you're just getting your first look at Bobby Rainey third in the country in rushing yards last season and led the nation in total carries. There's a little option game to the near side that goes to Antonio Andrews. A loss of six that didn't work. Don't like it. You having success running Bobby Rainey don't start the trickery stuff. Continue to come downhill. You're looking for about three to four yards to get yourself into third down and medium, and then you can convert there. Now, third and forever. It's third and Tennessee for Western Kentucky right now. K1 Jakes will line up in the shotgun. Line to make is down at the 26 yard line. Five defensive backs in for the Wildcats. High snap. Here comes some pressure. Jakes is leveled by Winston Guy right as he let it go. And the Kentucky defense will force the punt. Boy, nice pressure off the edge by now the linebacker, Winston Guy. And they're coming on an all out blitz. And you got to recognize on third down and long as a quarterback, you got to feel the pressure right here. You're going to get it here. Trevathan off the out outside as well. Both guys coming, one back to pick them up. So somebody going to come free. And now that clock as a quarterback, it's got to speed up where the ball comes out. Nice job of not taking the sack. Hendricks Brakefield to punt it away. Wobbly kick, fair catch called for and taken by Randall Burden. 33 yard punt. Well, the AP Top 25 features Oklahoma sitting atop the country, followed closely by Alabama the first uh, time since 2003. Last team to go wire to wire. How about Matt Leinert's USC Trojans back in 2004, which they later had to vacate. But the SEC's won five consecutive BCS national titles. Can they make it six? I voted Oklahoma number one to start the season. However, I don't think they will go wire to wire to finish as the national champion. There's a true freshman get his first carry. Josh Clemens, freshman running back out of Fayetteville, Georgia, the Class 4A Player of the Year in the state a year ago, 2,000-yard rusher. 
kind of further that point on Oklahoma. The reason why they've lost some good football players on the defensive side and linebacker. When you start going on road trips to Florida State, your alma mater, it's going to be tough. They got Landry Jones slinging it all over the field, though. There goes Clemens, nowhere to run. That front seven from Western Kentucky has been tough to handle here in the opening quarter. I'll tell you how tough Western Kentucky's been. You, Kentucky, the first three drives, nine plays, five yards, resulted in two punts, and then the turnover, the interception. You talk about playing some stout defense. Western Kentucky has done just that. Who's going to be the playmaker without Cobb, without Locke? Without Matthews and Hardline, somebody's got to step up for the Wildcats. Play clock down to seven. Third down and four. Newton nowhere to go. Flags down. Throws it out of bounds. I don't think he got out of the tackle box. No, he did not. A receiver was not in the area. Mark Curls throws a flag in the end zone. Well, we're we're going to have a rough in the passer by Bo Adebayo. The senior defensive end, and it was a hold before that. Someone along that uh, front for Kentucky. But it looks like Morgan Newton is a little bit shaken here early in this football game. Well, they're also the, the, the key there. Did the ball get past the line of scrimmage when it went out of bounds? I mean, it's hard to say from our angle right here, but I think that's what the discussion is from Mark Curls. Well, he took a hard shot and a late shot from Bo Adebayo. Big time discussion going on. There are multiple fouls on the play. Holding on the offense. Penalties decline. Intentional grounding. Number 12. Offense was inside the tackle box and threw the ball where no eligible receiver was. That penalty has lost it down at the spot of the foul. It'll be fourth down for there. After the play. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the succeeding spot. Automatic first down. How, How about that? that? How All about the good stuff was washed out by a bad, bad judgment on the part of Bo Adebayo. Number 90, the senior defensive end. There's some one of the new rule changes, unsportsmanlike conduct. Taunting gesture on the way to a touchdown will now be a spot foul. So you do something like that at about the five yard line. It's from there. But there's the what you're talking about. Yeah, really unnecessary. I mean, you have made an outstanding play. You stopped, forced a punt, and now you give them new life. Big arm of Newton on display down the right side through the hands of Larod King. Tyree Robinson was there, but King had a step on Robinson, and that could have been six. Boy, sometimes it's just your day because that ball should have been caught, and you've just breathed new life into the lungs of this Kentucky offense by that late hit on the quarterback. And Morgan Newton right on the money to LaRod King. He's out there. He's wide open, and you see it go right through his hands. We're right here just maybe takes his eyes off of it a little bit too soon but a well thrown football by Morgan Newton. Maybe they should have had him throw one of those deep early get him comfortable couldn't, couldn't put it any better in a better spot. Four man look from the Hilltoppers on second down and 10 play clock hits zero. There'll be a delay a game. Boy Kentucky just uh, not in sync well, both these coaches. There are going to be some. Things in film study tomorrow that they're going to want to erase in this first quarter. And right now, you see the frustration for Joker Phillips and his offense. His defense has played a lot of snaps in this first quarter. And you don't want to start drives behind the down and distance marker. Second and 15. That makes it tough. Defense and Lance Gidry, their coordinator, they can cut loose. Raymond Sanders the tailback as Newton just trips and falls back at the three. 
Nate Newton starting to feel the pressure. And you can see it. They're going to bring pressure from up top. Right here, you see the pressure. And he's trying to adjust and react to it and can't. And he just loses his footing a little bit. Now it's just a tap down. And hey, got to take care of the football and make sure you don't get a safety. Just run it out of there. Give it to Raymond Sanders. Punt and play defense. Newton already one interception. 0 for 5 on the evening. There's the handoff to Sanders. Nothing happening there. And the Hilltoppers stand tall once again. When Terry Smith steps up to make the play. Well, the last thing, if you're questioning the call, the play call, the last thing you want to do right now is to force something and a turnover. And then Kentucky, then all of a sudden, Western Kentucky's got an easy, easy points again. That does it for the first 15 minutes. 15 minutes the Wildcats would just as soon forget back in a moment. Evangel Christian Battles Union tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. We are visitors. Underdogs. Party crashers. Guests in a den of lions. But we will prevail. Because today, we are more than conquerors. Now it's time for a one of a kind part. Ready for this? I just signed the whole family up for unlimited mobile to mobile minutes. You're kidding. No. Where's that money coming from, Steve? Did it even cross your mind to ask your wife before signing us up for something so expensive? My mother was right. I should have married John Clark. They were free. I got them when I signed us up for unlimited messaging. Get more value from AT&T. Buy an unlimited messaging plan and call any U.S. mobile phone free. AT&T. Looking for life insurance can feel like a jungle of ifs. If I'll finally get the coverage my family deserves. If it's something we can afford. To steer clear of the confusion, go to MetLife.com. In less than five minutes, you'll get straight answers, like how much life insurance you really need and how much it costs. So no matter where you end up buying, you'll make the best decision for your family. Get guarantees for the if in life from MetLife. Call 1-888-MET-LIFE for your free quote with no pressure or obligation. Also get a free flight. You know that comes with a private island. Really? No, it comes with a hat. You see, airline credit cards promise flights for 25,000 miles, but... There's never any seats for 25,000 miles. Frustrating, isn't it? But that won't happen with the Capital One Venture Card. You can book any airline, anytime. Hey, I just said that. After all, isn't traveling hard enough? Ow. To get the flight you want, sign up for a Venture Card at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Uh, it's okay. I've played a pilot before. Justin Cut, you're back here in studio. A big Saturday of college football here on ESPNU. For all you SEC fans, check out that game at 7 p.m. Eastern. Number 22, Florida, host Florida Atlantic. And staying in the SEC tonight, Mississippi State. Vic Ballard is having himself a ball game. Run 66 yards to the touchdown. He's averaging 20.5 yards per carry. 30 to 7, 31 to 7, Mississippi State over Memphis. Thank you, Justin. We'd love to have anybody average or just gain 20 yards. <laughs> Dan Mullen's got him rolling. He's going to have yeah. a good football team. We'll get a chance to see them uh, next week. Yeah. At Auburn, Mississippi State 
Going on the road. Kentucky to punt it away out of their end zone. Good punt. Ryan Tidlochka with a good high punt. Dropped at midfield, but I think John Evans able to fall on it. A 43-yard punt when it's all said and done. Nice job by Tidlochka out of the end zone. But, Andre, there have been a couple of opportunities by each team here. Yeah, missed opportunities. And you talk about uh, Kewan Jakes going to Marcus Vasquez and then Morgan Newton down the sideline to the right game. Two scoring opportunities for both these teams. And right now, it's been Western Kentucky for the least amount of mistakes in this ball game early. That's why they have the lead, three nothing. Look at the offensive production for Kentucky. They haven't completed a pass, only four yards on the ground. They have had numerous penalties. It has been a disaster. I mean, that's all you can say about that first quarter. But it's a new 15. See if Western Kentucky can move the football. They haven't moved it a ton themselves. They do have Bobby Rainey, though, who will pick up three or four. Well, it is a dirty, ugly, nasty first quarter. <laughs> and you know what? Willie Taggart would have it no other way. He likes it just the way it is. Big, physical, SEC football team in Kentucky. And he is building a program at Western Kentucky, something that the alums will be proud of. He's had two excellent recruiting classes. Yeah, both his uh, recruiting classes since he's been at Western Kentucky have been rated tops in the Sun Belt. Off to a good start. That pass off the hands of the intended target to Mario Brown. Boy, Danny Trevathan, number 22 in white, is all over the place. Already five tackles tonight. He's out in coverage. They ask him to do so much. And as we talked about, he's led the conference in tackles a year ago with 144. And coaches say that he's just a guy that has a unbelievable motor. I think uh, the best compliment you can give a guy that plays football is he's just a football player. And yeah. Danny Trevathan, blessed with great speed, but uh, loves the game and is just a good football player. Jakes throws back over the middle, wide open. Bo Brand, the true freshman, inside the 25, out of bounds at the 21. Give the Hilltoppers a first down and a gain of 25. Oh, well, credit Kaiwan Jakes, the quarterback, for buying himself some time. And we talked about Danny Trevathan. Well, he's the guy that brings the pressure. And he almost gets there, but nice job of stepping away from the pocket and then knowing where your outlet is. When you get in trouble, where's the guy that can get you out of trouble? And it's Bo Brand right over the middle of the field and then turns it into a nice catch and run. Look at the passing yardage. Boy, well, there's some concern. Some concern on that sideline of Kentucky. They are being outplayed right now, Dave. Inside handoff goes to Kadeem Jones. Not much happening. Flags down. We'll check that penalty, but time for us to head to our studios. Justin. All right, thanks so much, Dave. Well, speaking of a game that's kind of a mismatch right now, how about UNLV and Wisconsin? Russell Wilson, 9 of 12, 214 yards, two touchdowns. It's 44 to 3 with still a whole bunch of time in the third quarter. Back to Dave and Andre. Thank you, Justin. Here's Mark Curls. He's been a busy man. Let's hear what he has to say. Formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. There's Willie Taggart. Runs this West Coast offense. Runs it. You asked him, he says, who, who, is, who can we model your offense after? If we were going to look at you, he says, same thing Stanford ran. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh. Exactly. Went there as on, a, on an internship. And learned the West Coast offense, got you really just fell in love with it, and then went to the Raiders in an internship, and here he is with the installation of it at, West, at Western Kentucky. Jake's going down the middle, wide open was his tight end Jack Doyle. I mean, wide open. I think right now I could hit that one. Uh, you give me that kind of time, <laughs> I think I could hit Jack Doyle down the middle. It's going to part. You see it. The safety, nice move. Occupying the safety with one tight end and then freeing up Jack Doyle. It's Jim Murphy 
the sophomore tight end goes on a corner route and occupies Mike Benton the safety and then it's just wide open for Jack Doyle what a well designed football play you just got to hit him Jake's now three out of nine out of the shotgun moving to his right looking for somebody now we'll tuck it and run and he's out of bounds they will spot it at about the 17 and a half 18 yard line Ronnie Sneed pushes him out of bounds that's a gain of eight a smart play because now you get it to a manageable situation on third down you can run the football if you if you choose to with Bobby Rainey maybe take a field goal here and add some points third and seven shouldn't flinch and a lot of plays in the playbook for third and seven ball sits right at the 18 yard line on the right hash will start in the I formation Bauer the tight end playing that hybrid H back roll now he goes in motion here's Rainey gain of about a yard before Dante Ruff steps in there and makes his second tackle of the night a gain of two and here comes the Hilltopper field goal unit. You got to think the way the defense has been has played for Western Kentucky that this is a safe bet. Kick the field goal, take the points. But you can't give up that freebie to Kentucky. 33 yard attempt. Actually make it 34 yards. Low snap bobbled. Tinius still connects and misses it to the right. A low snap caused the Hilltopper special teams unit to miss that one to the right. The drive stalls 3 nothing Western Kentucky in the second quarter. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Let's see if we can get one past the defense. Hut, go! Here it comes! Run the numbers! Boom! Get it! Spin! Whoa. Oh, nice hands! Jeff! Oh! <laughs> Good job, man! Nice! Okay, halftime. Now this is my favorite play. Oh! I'm wide open. I won't fumble. Fumble! Don't want to fumble any of these. Share what you love with who you love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Is up. And it's good. Good! They're great! Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. What happens when you use peak motor oil? You get premium performance and can save up to 10 gallons of gas every time you change your oil. So any car runs like a 10, even if it's more like a six. You're not just changing oil, you're saving gas. Put peak motor oil in, save on gas. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking bush beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? I became that, that that crazy guy that when it's time to go get it, I can I can do almost anything. Baloo gives the ball to Hershey Walker. Walker finds a hole on the right side. He's outside and he may be gone. Touchdown, Georgia. Nobody like that guy. 
in the history of college football. Herschel Walker, SEC Story, a new series by ESPN, debuting on Wednesday right here on ESPNU, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Some other topics, 40 minutes of hell. Arkansas basketball is another product putting together. Interesting series coming your way right here on ESPNU. A Wildcats trying to find a little bit of offense on first down and 10. Pass caught out to the 30-yard line, close to the first down. I think that will be a first down for Kentucky. And with that, let's check in with Kara. Well, guys, in that quarter break, you could see why offensive lineman Stuart Pines was elected a season-long team captain. He called the entire offense over to him and let them have a stern talking to, trying to inject some energy into this group. Stewart from Bowling Green, Kentucky, home of Western Kentucky. By the way, first completion for Kentucky in 18 and a half minutes of football. Newton trying to make it back to back completions. He does so. Hits Matt Rourke. Brought down by Arius Wright, a gain of three and a half. Protection is a little bit better for Kentucky. Larry Warford, the right guard, he's back in the ball game. We saw him go off, and then Stewart Hines, that's what brought him into the game at right guard. Now he's back at left guard where he would normally start. It's a little bit better protection. These guys are used to certain spots for Morgan Newton. Sanders with that handoff. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a, a yard. That'll bring up a third down. And we'll call it six and a half. They just can't seem to get the running game going with Raymond Sanders. Really thought that Kentucky would come out, be able to run the football. Big, experienced offensive line, and come right downhill until Morgan Newton got him, got his feet under it. And it's been really just the opposite. So on third down and six, nickel package defensively for the Hilltoppers with five defensive backs. Here's Morgan Newton, high throw to Larod King. That's incomplete, and the Hilltoppers once again stuff. The Wildcats, Keontae Young from his safety spot, lays the hit on the Rod King, and here comes the Wildcat punt team. A young player who has, according to the coaches, has big play potential. And he made six starts a year ago as a freshman, but well, that's a big-time hit and disengages the football to force another Kentucky punt. Tidlotska back to punt, stands at his 20, back deep. John Evans, the true freshman. He's at the 25. Boy, a booming oh, a kick. Punt. Evans, fair catches. Let's it drop inside the 10, down. Let's see where they spot it at the 8-yard line. A 60-yard punt. Could that be some momentum for the Wildcats? They desperately need it. Back in a moment. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Harris slot right drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With a seam! Wow! Can you believe it? One man to beat! We're headed to overtime! Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Field goal for the win! Oh! Check out these seats for this weekend's game. Scoring your dream tickets is no longer a fantasy. StubHub, where do you want to sit? I've always wanted to give something back to the community. I'm going to write a fabulous screenplay. I want to see the world one small town at a time. Investment plans should be as different as the people who own them. I want to retire in about 15 minutes. That's why you may want to choose a financial consultant who's focused on your individual needs. I want to play golf, play golf, play more golf. Give you Lions, investment insight for every generation. Artists are inspired by color. So are our engineers. Wagner Thermo Quiet Brake Pads. Brakes without compromise. I don't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm looking at it and I, I don't believe it. How did you, I mean, if you're here and 
At least we have Farm Bureau insurance. Because there's one in every county, Kentucky Farm Bureau agents have seen, well, almost everything. Your mother always said you were gifted. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. It's a hot night down on Broadway. A lot of activity coming up after this one concludes. Just to the second quarter, Western Kentucky leading Kentucky three to nothing. Dave Neal, Andre Ware. And Andre, we've talked about Kentucky's misfires offensively, but despite all that, they're only down three nothing. Yeah, just a, a play here or there could change the momentum in the Wildcats' favor. Now look at this game. I thought coming in, Kentucky was really in a must win type situation. They went six and seven a year ago, first losing season in five years for the Wildcats. Then you couple that with losing to, no disrespect to Western Kentucky, but Western Kentucky, a SEC team being beaten by a Sun Belt Conference team and can't have it. I, I thought it was a must win, an absolute must win for Kentucky. A lot of football left. 9:42 here in the second quarter. Hilltoppers backed up. Kentucky just flipped the field after a 60-yard punt from Ryan Tidlotska, and now the Hilltoppers try to run up the middle and get a couple of yards from Bobby Rainey. Rainey last year went crazy against Kentucky running the football. At 184 yards against the Wildcats last year. In Lexington, take a look at this Kentucky schedule that Andre was talking about. Yeah, and that, that, that was my point, really. You start talking about week three and four with Louisville, Florida, LSU, South Carolina, back to back to back. Those, that is a rough schedule. So you're thinking the first two weeks we will really ease into the season, get everybody, all the new players acclimated and in position. But you know, Western Kentucky, they've got, uh, they've got plans of their own tonight. Little power play off the right side, and not much happened there as Winston Guy steps up to make another tackle. Gain of about a yard for Bobby Rainey. And you know, you're talking about Kentucky that plays in the mighty Southwest Conference, excuse me, Southeast Conference. Well, I'm going way back to my days of playing yeah. in the Southwest Conference, but the Southeast Conference, and you know, the, the best conference in the country. And you cannot afford, when you talk about contending and being in contention at the end of the season, you talk about letting one get away from you early. You can't have that happen tonight against Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers two out of six on third downs. They're looking at third and six. Jake's nice spin move to get away from Winston Guy. Will run for it. I think he might have it. Boy, a mobile quarterback will drive defensive coordinators like Rick Mentor crazy. You bring pressure, it's third down and long. You've got everybody boxed up except Kaiwan Jakes. You get pressure by Winston Guy, and he's just going to outrace a couple of defenders, Mike Benton in particular, to that first down marker. Now, Dave, just about at the 20-yard line, it changes play calling for Willie Taggart and Zach Azani, the offensive coordinator. On first and 10, that ball is batted in the air and picked off. Winston Guy with the interception as it went off the arm of Kadeem Jones, who wasn't ready to handle it. Now you've got to play football for 60 minutes every snap. And you never know, especially in the West Coast offense, when you're going to get the football. Right here, Kadeem Jones just takes a playoff. Doesn't really think that uh, Kaiwan Jakes is going to come to him with the football. That one should have been caught. The result, an interception, momentum change. And now Kentucky, as we mentioned, one score away from having the lead in this football game. Let's not forget the punt by Tid Lotchka that flipped the field that set up this Kentucky offense in great position at the 23. Handoff left side goes to the freshman Josh Clemens. Only a couple of yards on that play. Boy, turnover. Go to the end zone. Take the shot to the end zone. You're at the at the 20 yard line, 22 yard line. Take a shot. Take advantage of the momentum change on a turnover.
Timeout taken by Kentucky. They looked a bit unorganized trying to get that play called and even seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Joker Phillips and company trying to find a little bit of offense. They trail 3-0 to the Hilltoppers. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins at noon. Nike Vapor Carbon Fly cleats are about being quick and blowing up plays. The quicker you are, the faster the play gets blown. You see how that offense is trying to fool us? I just came in for some cleats, Clay Matthews. You just need to get in there and blow it up. Take every advantage. Nike Zoom Vapor Carbon Fly Cleat at Dick's Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. One consumer electronics company used to rule the living room. But then something remarkable happened. A company from right here in America rose up, promising a revolution. Now, they're the number one LCD HDTV company with some of the industry's most awarded televisions. It's a new world. Vizio, entertainment freedom for all. the official training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TDF, the first ever indoor training bike that delivers everything you demand. A 20% incline and a 20% decline, so you'll experience exactly what the road does. Because it's powered by Google Maps, you choose the road and the TDF follows it. Every incline and decline, so no matter what comes at you, you'll be ready. The Proform TDF automatically adjusts resistance, incline and decline. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll know your exact output. You decide where to go, and the official training bike of the tour takes you there. And now that you've decided, we're ready to deliver. Order right now and get zero down and a free upgrade on rush shipping. Call the number on your screen or go online today. Western Kentucky leading 3 to nothing, but Kentucky, the ball sitting at the 20-yard line, trying to strike here in the second quarter. Well, a college football doubleheader Saturday on ESPNU at noon Eastern. A Big East Big Ten matchup as Boston College plays host to the Wildcats of Northwestern. Then at 3.30, Jimbo Fisher's Florida State Seminoles kick off their season at home as they take on Louisiana Monroe. Great college football action Saturday right here on ESPNU. So after the Kentucky timeout, second down and eight. Newton. A design run, got a couple of yards. He'll spot it around the 18 and a half yard line. Andrew Jackson with the stop. Well, they tried just about everything to get Morgan Newton going. A couple of easy passes, and he completed one early in that last drive. But he is a guy, mobile quarterback, and so you think, okay, just allow him to to run. Give him a run, a designed run where he gets himself hit, and now he starts to settle down. The butterflies leave him, and he can play a little bit better here going forward. Kentucky 0 for 5 on third downs. Last year, fifth in the conference, 44% on third down conversions. Some movement up front. Larry Warford pointing to the red jerseys, and the defensive front from Western Kentucky pointing at Larry <laughs> Warford. Offside, contact by number yeah, 96, was right. five yard penalty, still third down. Quantaria Smith reached out and touched Mr. Warford, and that'll cost the Hilltoppers five. You know, playing quarterback, it, it's just a different science. You see Quantaria Smith here, he's gonna, he's the guy that jumps and it causes Larry Warford to move. But it's an odd science. Some, some guys, to get them in, acclimated into a game, they've gotta have that run and, and be hit. Other guys, it's just an easy pass completion to get them going. So now on third down and two, it's the true freshman, Josh Clemens. From 14 yards out, and the Wildcats are now on the board. We talked to Randy Sanders yesterday, the offensive coordinator, and he's just going to go right behind Larry Warford and Billy Joe Murphy, the right tackle. 
and showing you some speed. He's got great size at 5'10, a little, little bit over 200 pounds. Randy Sanders excited about the true freshman. Greg McIntosh converts the point after, and Kentucky strikes for the first time of 2011, and they lead Western Kentucky 7 to 3. Set up by Ryan Tidlotska, 60 yard punt that flipped the field. Then some defensive work. Winston Guy with the interception, giving the offense an opportunity. And the Wildcats took advantage on the Josh Clemens touchdown run. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So me and the lads earned a trip to San Francisco twice as fast. We get double miles every time we use our card. I'll take these two, no matter what we're buying. And all of those. And since double miles add up fast, we can bring the whole gang. It's hard to beat double miles. Whoa, dude. Get the Venture Card from Capital One and earn double miles on every purchase every day. Go to CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. I'm not a morning person. Janie, though, happy, active. It's not natural. At least I used to think that. Then I found five hour energy. I couldn't believe the difference it made. Amazing. Coffee never did this for me. Uh, what are you doing? Had a five hour energy. Thought I'd join you. Janie really noticed. Am I a morning person now? I'd say we're on speaking terms, which is more than I can say about five hour energy, the cure for mornings. It only took two minutes for this town to be destroyed. To a little girl who lived through it, this is more than a teddy bear. It's a step towards normal. It's why all state catastrophe teams not only have hot coffee and help for grown-ups, they've also handed out more than 12,000 teddy bears to kids. People come first. Everything else is second. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? Justin Kutcher back here in studio coming up on the Sports NU Halftime Report. Number 20, Mississippi State is in action. Louisville wins its opener and Russell Wilson in Wisconsin flexing their muscles against UNLV. Now back out to Dave Neal and Andre Ware. Andre, what do you think about Wisconsin? I think Wisconsin is a door course team that, that might have a chance to play for the national championship. The, the Big Ten now with a championship game, I think they'll represent it's the legend side of it. <laughs> Legends lead. That, that's confusing. But uh, they may be right in the mix of it. Actually, the leader side is where Wisconsin's located. Well, Kentucky strikes to take a four point advantage here in the second quarter with 5.46 to go before halftime. Good football team, though, that got better, Dave. Wisconsin, when they added Russell Wilson. Line drive kick from Joe Mansour, and that is deep in the end zone. Touchback. Well, Western Kentucky's had a couple of opportunities now and just haven't converted. Yeah, you talk about Kaiwan Jones, J Jakes missing Marcus Vasquez right here. A little overthrow. That's a touchdown then. You get Jack Doyle in the middle of the field. Just put it up, float it over the middle and allow the big fella to make a play for you. Two instances where Western Kentucky really gave up points and left them off the scoreboard, so to speak. But Jakes got to find a rhythm he does he's got receivers that are running wide open Dave so first down and 10 from the 20 yard line for Western Kentucky Jake's three out of 10 41 yards and a costly interception not his fault though bounced off an arm of his intended target there's rainy in motion he'll slide out to the slot now Tied in. Jake, Jack Doyle, gain of five. Doyle, the man they call Jack Bauer because he does so much. He <laughs> saves the day. When they need a big play, they go to that young man. He just gets it done. 
I'm a big 24 fan as well. So is Coach Taggart. So he nicknamed him Jack Bauer. Big fan of Jack Bauer. But he's the team's weapon in the passing game. They like to go to him. Mackey Award list to start the season for Jack Doyle. K1 Jakes under center. In motion, Neil Wilson. A little run rainy that side, and he is swallowed up at the 25 yard line. Winston Guy, the first man on the spot, number five in terms of tackles for Winston Guy. The two pretty good football players met there Winston Guy and Bobby Rainey. And Guy has been all over the field tonight. Holding number 84 offense. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Still second down. So that'll back the Hilltoppers up 10. Well, there's that starting behind the down and distance marker for Western Kentucky as well. It makes it tough calling plays because you're going to face some now exotic looks from Rick Mentor. Pressure and try to force you. Yeah, like I want Jakes into a bad decision. Now the I formation. They'll hand it off to Rainey. Rainey gets it out to the original line of scrimmage, maybe, maybe the 21 yard line, a gain of five, but that'll bring up a third down and call it nine. Winston Guy yet again on the spot, assisted by Avery Wils Williamson. Rainey, the senior, a patient runner. He realizes it takes a little bit. He averaged just under five yards of carry last year, but he'll hit you at times. But the good ones, Dave, they'll take the three yards, four yards, five yards, and then all of a sudden rip off a 40 yarder on you. Oh, yeah, seven 150 yard games last year, nine 100 yard games. Jakes bobbles that high snap and then throws it high right to his head coach, former quarterback himself, Willie Taggart. And intended for Marcus Vasquez. And here comes the Hilltopper punt team. Interesting, both coaches back at their alma maters. Both these coaches know each other so well, going yeah. back to their high school days. We start to look along that sideline as well. I'm going to see the frustration now as it's shifted from Kentucky's sideline. They're playing with a little more emotion to now more of a frustrated look. You saw Marcus Vasquez come off the field after that last pass. A little more frustration on Western Kentucky sideline. End over end kick from Brakefield bounces and will be downed at the 34 yard line. A 46 yard kick. Well, on Saturday morning, nobody gets you ready for a full day of college football better than ESPNU. Beginning at 9 Eastern, Aaron Andrews hosts the first hour of college game day built by the Home Depot. At 10, catch a special college football version of Sports Nation. And finally at 11, get the latest news and updates from all the big game sites on College Football Whip Around. College football lives here on ESPNU. Andre and Karen and I heading off to Tuscaloosa after this one. As Alabama opens up their season against Kent State over at Bryant Denny Stadium. Golden flashes. There's a little razzle dazzle from the Wildcats that the Hilltoppers aren't buying. DeMarco Robinson swallowed up a loss of five on the play. Jared Clendenin staying home and making the play. Yeah, nice job. He recognized it and saw just the action of uh, Raymond Sanders. And Clendenin, a nice, well played from the defensive end, the senior defensive end from Stone Mountain, Georgia. On your way, Stevenson High School. Good program in the Atlanta area. They put out a ton of Division I football players. Here's Morgan Newton. Stands tall in the pocket. Hits Matt Rourke, and he falls forward out over the 35 to the 36, maybe 37 yard line. That will bring up a third down. Let's call it seven and a half, maybe eight. Matt Rourke, he's had some starts under his belt, but now for the first time as a senior, he'll be a full time starter at wide receiver. He's a good possession receiver, and I say that. Because he can recognize the holes in zone coverage and sit down and presents a nice big target for a quarterback. 
The only third down conversion Kentucky has had tonight resulted in a 14 yard touchdown run by Josh Clemens. Newton going up top looking for Rourke that is off his hands and incomplete. Arias right on the coverage. A couple of guys are going to just kind of kick themselves watching the film tomorrow. Big time pressure. Now Tevin Holeman inside, but Matt Rourke along the sideline gets his mitts on one that probably should have been caught. Tough catch, but still should bring that one in. Both wideouts now, Dave, Rourke and Farad King. But had big plays for this Kentucky offense. Fourth down and did Latch go back to punt. Josh Evans will make a play on it at the 18. Dances around out to the 26 yard line. 44 yard kick. Danny Trevathan with a special teams tackle. And now here come the Hilltoppers. Led by K1 Jakes and Andre what do they need to do to kind of get it going they've been kind of stuck in the mud here tonight as well offensively. Yeah I, I think you go to Bobby Rainey K1 Jakes has kind of struggled in the passing game and as well the offensive line at times has struggled to protect him to give him time to get through his progressions from the second to the third receiver so you go to where your bread is butter. Take a look at Bobby Rainey and get him going. Allow the offensive line. That's where you get better offensive line play as well when those guys can just fire off the football. There's Rainey. Pick up. Give him four on the carry. We'll take four yards of carry. Get you a first down every time. Yeah, he <laughs> proves that he, he's proven all the last season that he can carry the football a bunch of times. 28 times a, a game on the average for Bobby Rainey. Jake swallowed up. Can't get out of the trouble. Dropped back at the 24 yard line. Luke McDermott, the first one, and Collins Ukwu finishes up a loss of seven. And it looks as though Ukwu was still down. Ufu has really turned himself into a good football player. Has worked hard and added some weight. Ufu is the injured player. Let's take a look. That last play where you get the pressure right in the middle. And Sean Conway right here he had the center for Western Kentucky going to have to do a little bit better job than this if you're going to protect in the passing game that's just a Olay and that forces K1 Jakes to right into the mitts of Collins Uku. And you got a guy right in your face like that Dave Luke McDermott. Is the uh, playing nose tackle in? You got to make sure he's blocked. Uku continues to. He worked on that training staff. He's got it. Looks like their hand up around the shoulder pad, the chest area, as they continue to work on that right arm a little bit. And now. Joker Phillips comes out to check on his junior defensive end, who the coaches told us that both Joker Phillips and Rick Minter saying that they really expected Collins to have an outstanding year. He's had a great spring and fall camp and one of the leaders on that defense. And he provides the quickness that Rick Mentor likes in his system. Fast guys is why they moved Winston Guy down to linebacker from safety and then Collins Uku. Only 100 or 258 pounds but he, they love his quickness. And it's good to see him get himself up and walk off the field. Looks like he just fell awkwardly right before he Hit the ground got twisted a little bit. 
We'll see if Collins can get back in this game. Hope so. For his Kentucky teammates, certainly like to have him back on the field. We'll see him right here in the middle of the screen. It just kind of lands awkwardly. Maybe on that shoulder. That right shoulder that you, uh, you saw him working on. Looks like Kentucky will also now burn a timeout as well. That gives us an opportunity to look at what's coming up on Saturday. Boy, ESPNU has some good football to kick off this season at noon Eastern. Northwestern and Boston College get together and you say keep an eye on that Northwestern football team. That could be a pretty good game to open up things. Had a pretty good team coming back this year. And I hope for Northwestern to do some things in the Big Ten. Of course, everybody's looking forward to seeing what the Gators have in store. Charlie Weiss, the new offensive coordinator, what kind of impact will he have on John Brantley, who's been bothered by a back throughout fall camp. Nobody's really had a chance to see anything from the Gators since their spring game. Here's Bobby Rainey after the timeout. He's swallowed up by Danny Trevathan. Gain of four. And with one minute and 11 seconds left, Kentucky will use their third and final timeout to stop this clock on fourth down and nine. I'll try to put together a, a two-minute drive here with just 111 left in the game in the first half. See if Morgan Newton can put the Wildcats down and put another score on the board. But we we felt like they were just a momentum change from putting points on the board and even if uh, Western had hit the other field goal still just a touchdown away from taking the lead in the, in the ball game they miss it and uh, Kentucky they go down and put some points on uh, on the board themselves Collins Ukwu will head to the Wildcat locker room as there's just 111 left to play here in the first half. Back to punt. Hendricks breakfield. Randall Burden stands back at the 35. Short kick. He'll field it. And he is hammered at the 43. Everybody pops up after that big collision. After a 30-yard punt, Cam Thomas comes flying down for the special teams tackle. This is big time football here. A couple of guys with a big time collision. Credit Randall Burton for holding on to the football because that that's a big time lick that you're not expecting Cam Thomas to show up that fast. So now 104. No timeouts for Kentucky. Morgan Newton out of that shotgun looks to throw. Hit as he throws, lofts it up. Flag down back at the 42 of Western Kentucky. See if that's not a hold. Yeah, defensive back may have gotten a little, little bit of the jersey. And the intended receiver, Gene McCaskill. And the coaching staff, they're expecting some big things from Gene Before McCaskill. The pass was thrown, holding number 37 defense against an eligible receiver. King Artillery from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, Vince Williams, who has an interception, now whistled for the hold. And there and it you is. You see it right there, just grabbing the jersey. So that moves the football into Hilltopper territory with 56 seconds to go. Ball sits at the 47. I bet you thought I was going to go on my rant, didn't you? I, uh, yeah. We had to talk about 10 yard penalties on holding and pass interference. Andre says it should be a spot foul. Doesn't matter as Morgan Newton is eaten alive by Kenny Martin. That's a loss of 12, and the clock continues to run, and the Wildcats have no timeouts. So, second down and 22. More pressure trying to set up a screen and offensive lineman catches it after a tipped ball 
Stuart Hines got his big old paws on the football after Jared Clendenin <laughs> tapped it, making Hines an eligible receiver, and he gets it out near midfield to the 49. Well, I like what the big fella did, just turn and run, get some positive yards. Three seconds, two seconds. Kentucky can't get another playoff, and that'll do it. Joker Phillips shakes his head. This club will take a slim 7-3 advantage over Western Kentucky. It's halftime here in Nashville. Let's head to our studios. Welcome to Sports Center U Halftime Report. Justin Kutcher alongside Jason Seahorn and Charles Arbuckle. Kentucky early on Morgan Newton not looking too good. Well, whenever you lose a guy like Randall Cobb and you lose weapons, it's hard to manufacture that. And I don't care what anybody says. Any of these teams that have lost skill position guys, you go through those transitions. It's hard, Jason. I tell you, moving on is not easy to do. <laughs> really a dismal start for Kentucky in this game now Morgan Newton just tripping over his own feet trying for a, a drop and they're up seven to three. They're lucky right now that they had this lead over Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky has outplayed them only because of the turnover there that you saw Western Kentucky through in their own red zone or coming out of their own end zone. Other than that this game has been handled by Western Kentucky and Kentucky on the other hand looks like they're just a little bit lost offensively and as you said Charles it's like. No Randall Cobb, no offense right now. Yeah, I mean, he did everything for this offense. And the thing is, Morgan Newton had been in there. He has played. So I think whatever, whenever you have competition like he had in the past and he had to really play well, he has nobody behind him. And he's looking like he's just not playing as sharp as he should. All right, this is the second game on ESPNU here tonight. But there have been a lot of football games being played here the first day of college football. Let's start Mississippi State against Memphis. Memphis hosting a shorthanded Bulldog squad. Dan Mullins is spending five. Five players for the game. First quarter, no score. Chris Ralph goes 44 yards down the middle, finds Chad Bumpus. Mississippi, Mississippi State goes up 7-0. Then in the second quarter, Mississippi State now up 24-7. Vic Ballard, he had himself a ball game, goes 66 yards here for the score. They're going to run the football, but Chris Ralph is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country and in the SEC. Yeah, and you're going to hear Ralph to Bumpus a lot this year. 38 to 7 in the third quarter. How about Wisconsin against UNLV? Russell Wilson making his debut as a Badger, and this is going as well as they could possibly have scripted it. You'd call this as advertised. This is exactly what everybody thought would happen. Eight in the box, a lot of man to man coverage downfield, and he finds the open man. He finds Jared Aberdaris for a touch. It would lead to a touchdown pass. And then second quarter, 27 to 3. Here's Wilson. This is what he does, that dual threat quarterback. Can't stop this. And Jason knows as a safety, and I know as a tight end, if my quarterback takes off, my chances of winning are better when he can do these kind of things. You do not account for the quarterback in your defensive scheme. It's now 37 to 3. Wilson, little play action pass, finds Jacob Peterson. It is now 51 to 17. I think this one's in hand for Wisconsin. Now, Georgia Tech playing against Western Carolina. First quarter, no score. Western Carolina with the ball. The pressure, Brandon Watts caused the fumble on the five yard line. One second left in the half. Western Carolina blocks the kick. Isaiah Moore recovers, runs it back 69 yards. At this point, it's still a 42 to 14 game. So it's not that big of a deal, but it, that's a nice highlight for him. Absolutely. You, you, you pick that up and take it to the house. That's a highlight you have forever. Preston Lyons, he takes it in for the touchdown. 63 to 21, Georgia Tech rolls. On the game you saw here on ESPNU, Murray State against Louisville. The quarterback, who would be the starter? Would it be the 5'9", Will Stein, or the freshman, Teddy Bridgewater? Will Stein showed he is the starter. He really did. He played very well, was effective running the offense. And usually when you have a quarterback battle and you see the quarterback come out like this, you're happy as a coach, but you're also happy as a team because you still know the young guy's there. Teddy Bridgewater, not the start he won. Well, you know, listen, made some mistakes, but the thing that I take away from this game is the fact that Louisville did not have that closing power. They were not able to just shut uh, Murray State out. They allowed him to hang around that whole second half. A 21-9 victory for Louisville. Rutgers taking on North Carolina Central in New Jersey. Chase Dodd finds Mohamed Sanu. 
down the middle. It would lead to a Savon Huggins touchdown. Then third quarter, Rutgers up 21 to nothing. Michael Johnson, he is stripped by Scott Malone, recovered by David Maluski. Rutgers goes up 28 to nothing. So a good start to their season for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Well, we expected this team to be much better this year and a good start for them against the team North Carolina Central that gave them a lot of opportunities. Rutgers from the Big East, Wake Forest taking on Syracuse in the Big East. And sophomore Tanner Price, a slightly older Wake Forest taking on this Syracuse team. Second quarter, Wake Forest up 13 to 7. Price, the lefty, throws to the corner of the end zone, finds Michael Campanero. Nice throw right at the pylon where only the receiver can get it. Still 20 to 7. Now Ryan Nassib scrambles, eludes the pressure, finds Prince Tyson Gully. Gully goes down the sideline, picks up the first down, says, I should be on the hurdle team. Then, same score now, Wake driving. And it's Chris Givens down the sideline into the end zone, 22 yards for the touchdown, 29 to 20. No team is more ready for the football season to start than Ohio State. Earlier on Thursday, two starters and a third player have been suspended from the Buckeye football program. Starting running back Jordan Hall, starting defensive back Travis Howard, and reserve DB Corey Brown each have been sat down for receiving impermissible benefits of $300 or less earlier this year. The university is asking the NCAA for their reinstatement for the rest of this season. Some news and notes around college football here early on. Miami getting a $4.2 million gift to fund football scholarships. How about this? The big news, this second graphic. South Carolina will start Connor Shaw at quarterback, not Garcia. That's all Steve Spurrier. He just has a feel for his quarterbacks. He must think he's playing better right now in camp. He's going to go with the hot hand. And, of course, the next one, Dan Persa, questionable in that game Saturday noon on ESPNU, Northwestern against Boston College. Northwestern was successful with Dan Persa. They have to hope that they can play well against Boston College, which has a great defense. Luke Keekley, tackling machine. Those games are on Saturday. This game is also on Saturday. Oregon against LA. You. That's the big one. We'll talk about that here on the Sports and U Halftime Report when we come back. The most headroom per dollar of any car in America. The all-new Nissan Versa sedan from 10990. Innovation upsides. Innovation for all. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. In 1976, a leading NCAA collegiate organization was born. They named themselves the Sun Belt Conference. Brick by brick, year after year, our conference is growing, evolving, reaching even greater heights of success. We are steadfast in our achievements. We are the Sun Belt Conference. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking Bush beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? Can't you see? Can't you see? We got bodies right there. Go, go, go. I found them. They're safe. She ain't going nowhere. This war is in our backyard. Border Wars returns Sunday at 9 on National Geographic, Channel 276.
make the right first impression. Go to Vistaprint.com or call 1-800-VISTAPRINT today and get started with 500 premium business cards for just $10. Vistaprint, make an impression. Back here on the Sports Center, you have time report. Josh Clement runs in for the touchdown, the only touchdown so far in this ballgame between Kentucky and Western Kentucky. Coming up on Saturday, this is all before the games actually begin here on ESPNU. It begins at 8 a.m., first and 10, 8.30 film room, college game day built by the Home Depot, Sports Nation, and college football whip around. And some of the games here on ESPNU on Saturday, what a way to start it off. Northwestern, cool. Boston that's College. getting you ready. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a Saturday. Saturday for you. Florida State in action. Number 22, Florida also on the U. And Grambling Alcorn State wrapping up the night. UC Davis against Arizona State. First quarter, no score. Arizona State with the ball. Cameron Marshall takes the handoff. He goes up the middle, shows a second effort, gets a touchdown, 7 0. Then Brock Osweiler. This is a guy who a lot of people have pinpointed as one of the top quarterbacks in the country. It's also one of the reasons that Arizona State is ranked, ranked up there in the top 25 in some polls because of the quarterback position. 21 to nothing right now. Arizona State up on top. Montana State against Utah. Utah, one of those teams that people have been talking about. <coughs> Excuse me, first score, first quarter, no score. Montana State, Denarius McGee intercepted by Brian Blackman. Blackman fumbles down the sideline, recovered by Ryan Lacey. Utah would score. Then second quarter up 17-0. It's John White, the fourth, up the middle. It's now 27 to 10. Now some big games coming up tomorrow. TCU at Baylor, a battle of Texas down there. But let's talk about the matchups on Saturday. Those last two games that you see there, Oregon, LSU, Boise State against Georgia. Let's start with Oregon and LSU. Oregon is such a fun team to watch because of their speed. They played against Auburn in the national championship, an SEC team. They opened this year against an SEC team. What are you looking for in this game? Well, I'm looking for the same speed and the same pace out of Oregon. And you, Coach Kelly said it earlier this week. He said, listen, LSU and Auburn are two different animals. Do not say that the same team just because they play in the same conference. They've admitted that they had some issues in that game. They made a lot of mistakes. They said they would corrected those mistakes. I look for the pace of this game to be at Oregon's breakneck speed, and that alone will hurt LSU. You know, the last two bowl games, they haven't played well Oregon. That's against Auburn last year and then the year before Ohio State. But if you look at this team, LSU, they have to have good play out of Jared Lee, who has come back from an early part of his career and played better. He was in a lot of those games last year. All these LSU fans have talked about not wanting Jordan Jefferson to start? Well, you got your wishes now. You better be careful what you wish for. Okay, you got your wish there. If you are a, well, if you're a, a fan now, let's talk about this next matchup of Georgia, excuse me, of Boise State and Georgia. Boise State every year, first game of the season, they go on the road, they play somebody tough. It's no different this year. I love what they try to do. I love the fact that they try to take on these behemoths. They try to take on the automatic qualifying conferences. Listen, the one thing they've got to do, though, they've got to overcome the loss of Titus Young and Austin Pettis. They, they do that. They'll have some, they'll have some uh, success on offense because their entire passing game revolved around those two, those two wide receivers who are now playing in the NFL. Same can be said about Georgia. Murray's going to have some difficult times replacing two of his starting receivers that are also in the NFL. Well, and then you also look at Isaiah Crowell, who we think will play a lot, the running game. That's going to be key for them. Aaron Murray, if he has the play-action pass, can get it to the tight end, get comfortable there, I think they'll be fine. All right, well, those games are coming up on Saturday. Big weekend of college football. How about this game right here, right now on the U? Western Kentucky against Kentucky. A big interception by Kentucky's defense leads to the only touchdown, 7-3 at the half. You ready for this? I just signed the whole family up for unlimited mobile to mobile minutes. You're kidding. No. Where's that money coming from, Steve? Did it even cross your mind to ask your wife before signing us up for something so expensive? My mother was right. I should have married John Clark. They were free. I got them when I signed us up for unlimited messaging. Get more value from AT&T. Buy an unlimited messaging plan and call any US mobile phone free. AT&T. I'm a conservative. But I don't vote along party lines. I just want my family to be secure. I'm not a follower. I'm my own woman. 
Financial consultants should be as independent as the clients they serve. Independence is what it's all about. I, I can afford to be independent now. That's why you should consider the personal attention of a Hilliard Lions financial consultant. I wear white shoes when I want to. Hilliard Lions. Investment insight for every generation. Looking for life insurance can feel like a jungle of ifs. If I'll finally get the coverage my family deserves. If it's something we can afford. To steer clear of the confusion, go to MetLife.com. In less than five minutes, you'll get straight answers, like how much life insurance you really need and how much it costs. So no matter where you end up buying, you'll make the best decision for your family. Get guarantees for the if in life from MetLife. Call 1-888-METLIFE for your free quote with no pressure or obligation. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Team is arms, legs, blood, sweat, and soul. A lot goes into team. But what we take away stays with us forever. What happens when you use peak motor oil? performance and can save up to 10 gallons of gas every time you change your oil. So any car runs like a 10, even if it's more like a 6. You're not just changing oil, you're saving gas. Put Peak Motor Oil in, save on gas. Morgan Newton is tripping over his own feet en route to a 4 for 11 first half with one interception. Now, if Western Kentucky can upset Kentucky here, you better believe the Palmer and Pollock show every Monday, 1 and 10 p.m. Eastern. The experts every Tuesday, 1 and 7, will be talking about that. But on the other side of the break, we'll get it back out to Dave Neal, Andre Ware, and Kara Capuano. We're in the mood for amazing seafood tonight. Pan seared just for us. Anybody? You know, seasoned with shrimp and scallops. Perfectly seared tilapia made to order. On an all-you-can-eat dinner buffet. For around 10 bucks. Heads up. Only Golden Corral would serve up endless made-to-order pan seared seafood. It's incredible shrimp, tilapia, and scallops with your choice of amazing sauces. All on our endless dinner buffet, still for around 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Bam! Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. Let's see if we can get one past the defense. Hut, go! Here it comes! Ready the numbers, boom! Get it, spin! Whoa. Oh, nice hands! Check them. Oh, <laughs> good job, man! Nice. Okay, halftime. Now this is my favorite play. Oh! I'm wide open. I won't fumble. Fumble! Don't want to fumble any of these. Share what you love with who you love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Is up. And it's good. Good. They're great! I chose WKU because I love the campus, teachers, everything here, which is a perfect fit. I had the best advisor in the world, and it's definitely because of him I'm graduating early. Is the spirit in you? Find out at spiritofwku.com. I'm in the WKU broadcast program. The experiences that I've had so far in broadcast news are definitely preparing me to do anything in front of or behind the camera. Is the spirit in you? Find out at spiritofwku.com. I don't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm looking at it and I, I don't believe it. How did you, I mean, if you're here and yeah. at least we have Farm Bureau insurance. Because there's one in every county, Kentucky Farm Bureau agents have seen, well, almost everything. Your mother always said you were gifted. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment.
Introducing the official training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TDM, the first ever indoor training bike that delivers everything you demand. A 20% incline and a 20% decline, so you'll experience exactly what the road does. Because it's powered by Google Maps, you choose the road and the TDF follows it. Every incline and decline, so no matter what comes at you, you'll be ready. The Proform TDF automatically adjusts resistance, incline and decline. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll know your exact output. You decide where to go, and the official training bike of the Tour takes you there. And now that you've decided, we're ready to deliver. Order right now and get zero down and a free upgrade on rush shipping. Call the number on your screen or go online today. This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Well, if you're Western Kentucky, you're still in this one. It's what you wanted. You wanted to get to halftime, give yourself a chance. That's what they've done. Kentucky leads seven to three, about to start the third quarter. Dave Neal and Andre Ware. And Andre, obviously, for Kentucky, this was a, a new season for them. I lost a lot of their big guns, only seven points. I can't imagine it could get any worse offensively for this group, but yet Western Kentucky's had some opportunities themselves in misfire. Yeah, they did. They had Jack Doyle for a touchdown, Marcus Vasquez for a touchdown. Let's take a look at uh, at Jack Doyle here the tight end. You're going to right here you see the safety over the top. You put pressure on him with a corner route by one tight end then you're going to have Jack Doyle go on a post route. So the safety's got to make a decision. Martavius Nellums or actually here it's Mike Benton the safety. He chooses to go with the corner route and now K1 Jakes has just got to throw got to throw Jack Doyle a catchable football couple of opportunities for Western Kentucky to score early in this football game. They've left some points basically on the table in the first half. Those stats are uh, not exactly what Kentucky had in mind. 35 total yards matches the number of yards they were penalized averaging just 1.3 yards per play. Both teams got their points off of turnovers. And basically the score is where it is because of those numbers and under we talked about it if you're Kentucky you're in that locker room and I would just assume that Joker Phillips says listen guys we can't play anywhere it can only get better from here and we're leading yeah it starts up front though Dave when you talk about how the offensive line has played for Joker Phillips they came in they were a little bumped and bruised already coming in and then you lose Larry Warford for a couple of downs in the first half he's able to come back Stuart Hines is playing with a sprained knee that he's had since early August so a couple of lineup changes and you don't, you can't really underestimate the value of where guys go on an offensive line when they've worked together most of camp I think it's showing up for Kentucky or it did in the first half hopefully for Joker Phillips it got itself ironed out at halftime well, Western Kentucky won the toss they deferred so that they would get the football here to start the second half. Kick sails down to Darius Brooks. Brooks hit at the 20 and dropped on the spot. An 18 yard return. Time to check in with Kara. Give us some updates from both sidelines. Kara, what do you have? Well, guys, Western Kentucky head coach Willie Taggart told his players at the half that this game is playing out exactly as the coaching staff predicted. He said if it can be close at the half, it's a winnable game for them. Meantime, Kentucky head coach Joker Phillips told me too many pen penalties, gave up a turnover. Everything that plagued them last year is coming back to haunt them despite preaching against it all preseason in practice. Ball security on receptions, Andre, is what Kentucky's looking for in the second half. Yeah, no doubt about it. They, they've actually had some opportunities in the passing game as well and put the ball on the ground. Bobby Rainey, quick nine out of the gate for the senior tailback out of Griffin, Georgia. Not recruited by any of the major colleges. Decided to settle on Western Kentucky and they are glad to have him. The bread tastes pretty good. Add a little butter to it, and that's Bobby <laughs> Rainey for this he offensive did. Western Kentucky. Expect him to get the football early, often, and a bunch for Western Kentucky. 
Second and short. Rainey the single setback. Two tied in set. They'll give it to number three again. Makes a man miss. Picks up the first down and a couple of more out over the 35 to the 37. A gain of seven. Taylor Wyndham had a chance for the tackle and just couldn't bring him down. That's the third or fourth time a Kentucky player hasn't been able to wrap him up. Five missed tackles tonight for the Wildcats. Yeah, you're looking at the Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Year, and only two guys in the entire nation rushed for more yards than Bobby Rainey. And he kind of has that look. Coach, what are you taking me out for? I'm not tired. I can carry this baby 30 times if I need to. Antonio Andrews now lines up at running back number five. He will lose a yard on the carry tripped up by Winston guy who's had a heck of a game. He and Danny Trevathan Rick Minner said those two guys are our leaders on defense and we're going to play them all over the field. They're going to be moving around 15 tackles between those two players tonight. Take Bobby Rainey out now they end up in second and long and just kind of wonder why you just want to pick away at this Kentucky defense. You talked about Antonio Andrews. He was a high school quarterback. He's their their version of Randall Cobb so to speak is how he was described to us. That pass is incomplete looking for Marcus Vasquez the team's leading returning receiver 30 catches a year ago three touchdowns missed the final three games last year with a broken collarbone you can see a little frustration on Marcus's face shaking his head and he started his college career as a quarterback as well and he led all receivers last year with 30 catches as you mentioned missed the, the last couple of weeks of the season with that collarbone that is a painful injury. Jake's over the middle pass is caught batted in the air and picked off. Ronnie Sneed has it and he's dropped at the 46 yard line of Western Kentucky a five yard return. And Ronnie Sneed in the right spot at the right time. The senior out of Tallahassee picks up the interception. We're right in the middle of the field, and Dewan Jakes here. He stands in there. He gets the pressure, takes a lick, and the young freshman has got to hold on to it. Bo Brand takes one from Martavius Nellums, the safety. It pops out. One of the results an interception. Couple of bad. Has things to have happen to you. Ronnie Sneeze, the guy that comes up with the interception, but the two picks that K1 Jakes has thrown, that one knocked out and pops out, and Ronnie Sneed picks it off. Kadeen Jones not ready for the football, and Winston Guy is able to come up with an interception. A couple of bad breaks, but they, they still count. They're reviewing this play, and I think the deal is did he, did the ball touch the ground? Or maybe before his it was knee before it came out. Boy, that was a big time lick. Take another look, look at it. Nice grab by Bo Brand. And we're going to see if the knee is down before the ball pops out. That's close. That is close. Then the ball comes out, comes squirting out. This one may be overturned. Willie Taggart was down the sidelines kept looking at the big boards here at LP field to see if he could get a good look at it. He had that challenge flag. Right here take a look at the right knee right there. Even the right hip and then the ball comes out. Each coach is allowed one challenge if they have a timeout available. If at they do point, challenge it's, it it's a catch right now. If they do challenge it and lose the challenge, they will lose a timeout. So that's why you have to have one to challenge. It's an SEC officiating crew, and Mark Curl's in charge. I think that's a catch, and he's down, and Western's going to get the football back. That knee is down right there. there. And I don't see a football anywhere. 
I'm with you, Andre. We may we may be uh, 0 for 1 out of the gates here in 2011, but I'm going to at least agree with you no, this no, no. time. We're, we're, we're 1 and 0 out of the gates. Off to a good start. <laughs> All right, you stay positive, right? <laughs> it looks like the play may stand, though. Let's see the way I... After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Hmm. 0, and 0 for 1. I hitched my wagon up to you. And I, I still think he was down. <laughs> you know, I just don't think there was conclusive evidence to overturn it. I think is at the end that's of the day right is what there. I think the uh, officiating crew would come back and tell us. And it was a tough call, and it favors Kentucky. Five-man front for Western Kentucky. Morgan Newton hands it off, looking for that freshman Josh Clemens. Perhaps the lone bright spot for Kentucky offensively was Clemens' 14-yard touchdown run back in the second quarter on a third down play. He had a pretty good prep career at Whitewater High School in Fayetteville, Georgia, where he rushed for over 2,000 yards as a senior. He was a 4A player of the year in the state of Georgia, and that's doing something. There are some pretty good football players on every level in the state of Georgia. Bobbled snap by Morgan. Stands tall in the pocket. Lost the football. It's loose and it's picked up by the tight end. Jordan Allmiller who stayed in to block. It was actually Morgan Newton that actually came up with that football. But Xavier's Boyd is the guy that comes around the edge. It all started as you mentioned with a late snap and allowed Boyd to get there. Al Miller had it, and then Morgan Newton came up. Actually, cradles the football, took it away from Al Miller. A loss of 11 yards on that play will now make it third down and 22. Kentucky's been fighting the chains all night. A little delayed handoff. Back to the original line of scrimmage goes Clemens, brought down by Tyree Robinson. That's a Gain of 11 and a half, maybe 12. And that will bring out the Kentucky punt team. And took Ryan a, Tidlochka. Took a little while to get the punt team out there. I thought maybe Joker Phillips was thinking about going for it, and you certainly don't do that in this situation with a 7-3 lead field position in your favor. So you punt and play defense here. Ryan had a 73 yarder against Ole Miss last year had a 60 yarder here tonight averaged almost 44 a year ago off to a good start here in 2011 almost 46 per punt a little delay a game again by Kentucky they have had a couple of those this evening I don't think that's one that's going to hurt you too badly first game where you make a few mistakes penalties and Things to work on for week two. Back at the 10 yard line, John Evans. Another youngster getting some work for Willie Taggart's Hilltoppers. That ball will hit and bounce inside the five down to the three, and that is where it will be down. And the punting unit for Kentucky having a pretty good night. A 49-yard kick down inside the five. Western Kentucky with the football. 10-15 to go in the third quarter. The Hilltoppers down four. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. It's time for a one of a kind part.
Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Check out these seats for this weekend's game. Scoring your dream tickets is no longer a fantasy. StubHub, where do you want to sit? Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. Are you Team Palmer or Team Pollock? Jesse Palmer and David Pollock take an inside look at the most anticipated stories and matchups in college football. He consistently does a great job developing players. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. We hand it off to Herschel. There's a hole. Five, ten, twelve. He's running over people. Oh, you Herschel Walker. All I remember is hitting his leg, and it was like I hit a tree trunk. It was the hardest thing I'd ever hit. A footprint here, a footprint here. And I saw Walker run into the end zone for his first collegiate touchdown. That is a great story you will not want to miss. It's SEC Story. Debuts with Herschel Wednesday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPNU. Another show we're working on is the 20th anniversary of the SEC football championship game. The initial game back in 1992. And remember when that came out, Andre, it was all about there's no chance now for the league to win a national championship. Yeah. You're going to beat each other up. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit's changed since yeah. then, hasn't it? I'll tell you what. You look at Bobby Rainey. Just ride this horse. Tough to find behind those big offensive linemen and just give it to him. Speaking of running backs, Andre, how about uh, the news in Nashville? And it's uh, swamped the area with uh, live shots throughout the day. Chris Johnson gets an extension to his current contract. Four years, $53.5 million. Hmm. I think around $30 million of that is guaranteed. You know, perhaps the. Uh, Just give it to him, too. <laughs> you know, last year, uh, 1,300 yards. He and Arian Foster put on a pretty good show running the football. Went over 2,000 yards, only the sixth player in NFL history to do so. Not much happened. They needed about a half a yard, and I think they'll get at least a yard and that'll be good enough to move the chains on third down and one. Yeah the big fullback Kadeem Jones all 270 pounds of him kind of running it in there between the tackles able to move the chains and getting some now respectable or field positions getting a little bit better considering where Western Kentucky started this drive. So the ball sits on the 15 yard line fresh set of downs. A couple of tight ends move to the left. Here comes Jack Doyle back to the right and they'll hand it off to Bobby Rainey and he just falls backwards still on his feet out over the 20 to the 22 made something out of nothing. Right, second third fourth effort there for Bobby Rainey and that's what I'm talking about. You can't find him as a defender and the next thing you know he's in your chest coming downhill so you're going to give up something to him he's three four yards downhill and you see the disappointment of having to come out of the game they wanted to be more balanced this year with Bobby Rainey and maybe reel in some of those carries but close games you got to go to what's working and right now it's Bobby Rainey Rainey checks out Antonio Andrews in a tailback he'll get the carry 
First hit by Ronnie Sneed, finally brought down by Mikey Benton, a gain of two, and here comes Rainey back on the field. One of the things we talked to this Western Kentucky staff about was the number of carries Rainey got. He survived the year. He even said he wasn't too beat up at the end of the season, but 340 carries a year ago. Well, and that's in 12 games, and you look at what Chris Johnson, the stats that we popped up, 316 carries, that was for a 16-game season last year. So. You see the difference played four more games but yet Bobby Rainey had more carries than even Chris Johnson a year ago. Here's Rainey working that left side. It is a good thing that Rick Minner has his club swarming to the football because Rainey's getting past the first Kentucky defender. It's tough to bring down and even when you arrive there when you're able to sort it out and find him. He's so elusive that you can't really, the first guy can't get a hand on him. So you have to tackle in numbers. And you're talking six missed tackles tonight for this Kentucky defense. Another first and ten coming up for Western Kentucky. This drive started inside their five. We're at LP Field here in Nashville. Western Kentucky using this as a home game. The second of a four game series between these two clubs. Looking for Vasquez. Incomplete around the 40 yard line. Well, pressure again by Winston Guy and that move to linebacker. Boy, he's going to have some fun this season. You get to play right around the line of scrimmage. A lot of blitzes in this Rick Mentor defensive scheme. It reminds me of what Tennessee did. Uh, junior year, the final year for Eric Berry at yeah. Tennessee, when they kind of took him from that safety spot and inched him up to the line of scrimmage. Well, he's playing more in the box, and you got to be able to tackle when you come up like that. And Winston, guys, he's off to a good start in this new defense for Kentucky. Rainey, he's out to the 34. Gain of seven yards. Kentucky missing one of their key players on that defensive line. Colin Zuku for an update. Let's check in with Kara. Well, guys, he is out of the game. His chest is iced. He had a bruised rib. They checked it out at the half, and they don't want to take any chances, so he's done. The junior out of Laverne, Tennessee, is certainly not wanting to be in. Uh, Wrapped in a bag of ice right now. Has a sack tonight, a couple of tackles, tackle for loss, and he left back in the second quarter. Rainey splits wide to the right. Throw over the middle into some pretty good coverage by the Wildcats. Tyler Higby, the wide receiver, unable to connect, a little sit down route. Just over the tackle, and they want Jake's going to have to get it, get it revved up in the passing game. You like to ride Bobby Rainey as much as possible, but now you're starting to see seven, eight men in the box, which makes it a little bit tougher to run the football. You got to hit some passes just to keep the defense honest. How about this spread formation on a punt? Oh, what a punt! And it is a good punt from Hendricks Breakfield. A booming kick that's downed. They will spot it at the seven. How valuable is a punter? 58 yards on that punt. Down by Darius Brooks at the seven. There is a flag back at the 33 near the Kentucky sideline. There's a penalty marker on the field. We watched Brickville warm up, and we were just in awe. As he was hitting punts and just spiraling and checking them up, looked like your sandwich with that one. Just checked it up right there around the 10 yard line. Breakfield from right here. Actually, inside the 10, closer to the, at the seven yard line. Breakfield, a During the kick, Nashville native. Personal foul, number 13, offense. The 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, Kentucky. Timeout. 
Well, that'll give Kentucky some breathing room as they'll march it out 15 yards to the 22-yard line. Good look at downtown Nashville. We're at LP Field where the Kentucky Wildcats lead Western Kentucky 7-3 here in the third quarter. Running backs don't stand in line. We run through them, especially when Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong. Nike Pro Combat. I forgot my wallet, Steven Jackson. Take every advantage. Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong at Dick's Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Harris slot right, drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Wow! Can you believe it? One man to beat! Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Field goal for the win! Oh! I've always wanted to give something back to the community. I'm gonna write a fabulous screenplay. I want to see the world one small town at a time. Investment plans should be as different as the people who own them. I want to retire in about 15 minutes. That's why you may want to choose a financial consultant who's focused on your individual needs. I want to play golf, play golf, play more golf. Give your clients. Investment insight for every generation. It only took two minutes for this town to be destroyed. To a little girl who lived through it, this is more than a teddy bear. It's a step towards normal. It's why all state catastrophe teams not only have hot coffee and help for grown-ups, they've also handed out more than 12,000 teddy bears to kids. People come first. Everything else is second. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? Somebody better. Saturday night in primetime on ESPNU. The Will Muschamp era begins in Gainesville as the Florida Gators will host Florida Atlantic College Football Primetime. Presented by Five Hour Energy. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPNU. What do you expect? Well, fast, in your face, aggressive defense. And then Charlie Weiss with, uh, he, know, he knew how to make it work with fast guys at Kansas City last year. He's got more of the same at Florida. Interesting to watch the Gators this year offensively. Morgan Newton going up top. That pass is dropped again. Matt Rourke. Covered on the far side by Arius Wright. Flag down at midfield. A lot of bump and shoulder to shoulder between Wright and Rourke. Here, number 21, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, let's take a look. You, you got to fight for the football. Sometimes you just got to go make a play for your quarterback. He's struggling. Matt Rourke down the field. Go up and fight right there. Just make a play. And on a couple of occasions, he's had the football hit him in the hands and unable to come up with it. But you got to give me a little more effort than that. Is that a penalty? I, I don't think so. I, I was thinking about the same thing. <laughs> Boy, that's that's getting a little touchy. Josh Clemens. Gain of seven. And with all the rule changes, now I'm going to get on that. I knew it was coming out well, sooner I gotta or later. Get it. I got to go there. It's got to be a, it's got to become a spot foul at some point pass interference pass interference and it should be a, a spot foul down the field like this it's a bump it's a spot foul in the NFL I think you're trying to keep the differentiation between both college and pro football but you change rules all the time that is one I believe should be a spot foul Here's Clemens trying to get that first down. About a yard shy, gain of two. Andrew Jackson with the tackle. Time for us to check in with our studio. Justin. 
All right, thanks so much, Dave. Well, a nail biter up at the Dome in Syracuse in overtime. Ryan Nassib finds Van Shu. Is it a touchdown? They ruled a touchdown after a replay. It stands. Then Wake Forest has a chance. Fourth and four, they go for it. They have no other choice. And what happens? Uh-uh. Syracuse hangs on 36-29. Back out to you. A lot of fun in that one, Justin. Here it's third down and one for the Wildcats. Now it's going to be fourth down and four. Who made the play? But Andrew Jackson, who now has 10 tackles in this one. That's a loss of three. Well, you talk about a guy that just loves the game. 6'1, 255 pounds, and playing that middle linebacker. And that's what you got to do read it out and then attack and make sure when you attack the way he does. Look at that. He knows where the back is going and then attacks the football. Well played by Andrew Jackson. So Kentucky will punt it away on fourth down and four. It and is another in. good one. Sid Lotzka having a awesome night tonight for Kentucky. Good coverage again by the Wildcats. That is a 52 yard punt and a bad decision. Josh Evans the true freshman will probably hear about that on the way back to that Western Kentucky sideline. The Hilltoppers do have the football. They trail by four. 3.07 to go in the third quarter. Evangel Christian Battles Union tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Is your computer running slowly? Does it take more than three seconds for your email to load? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes and crashes? These are not only annoying, but can cause permanent damage to your computer. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, your computer and your privacy may be at risk because these are usually the telltale signs of a virus and it can only get worse until you act. Get a free diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. MyCleanPC is outstanding and my computer is running faster than ever. MyCleanPC came through with flying colors when no one else could. MyCleanPC totally cleaned up my system and increased my speed. MyCleanPC.com can remove spyware, viruses, and infected emails, all speeding up your PC's performance. It offers all-in-one protection and it's been downloaded by millions of users. Even if you have antivirus software, your computer could still be infected. Find out instantly with a free comprehensive diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. Dish Network claims to be a better value than DirecTV. What Dish doesn't tell you is that if you're one of the millions who love AMC, BET, Bravo, or MSNBC, you won't get them with Dish Network's Top 120 package. In fact, you won't get any of these 48 channels. With DirecTV's Choice Package, you get all those channels plus every other top-rated channel, too. More of the channels you love. Another reason 50 million people agree. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. U.S. Open. Live coverage tomorrow. Direct TV, Channel 217. Ryan Tidlotchka, the punter for the Wildcats, has had a great night tonight. Helped Kentucky here on this particular play. Well, no, many, no matter how many times the ball checks up, you see you're inside the 10 yard line. You got to let it bounce and attempt to go into the end zone. You can't feel this because that happens. Now you put your team in a bad situation in terms of field position. 48 plays for Western Kentucky, 149 yards. You can add a couple of more on that, maybe four when it's all said and done. Ball came free, but they'll say the forward progress stopped at the 11 yard line. So a couple of extra yards on the pro on that play that'll make it second down and five. Well, we talked about or asked coach Tiger what's what was this what's the strength of this offense and he said the running game with Bobby Rainey. They get it going and then all of a sudden they want to give him a break. He doesn't want the break. 
because he's he's a guy that's used to carrying the football a bunch and then all of a sudden he can't get it ramped up again. White jersey swarm over Rainey that time and bring him down after a gain of maybe a yard. It's kind of the same reason Dave I'm a, against a two quarterback system because you maybe get one guy going with the promise to the other that he's going to play and then you take a hot guy out put a cold one in he can't get going then you try to go back to the hot guy and he's ice cold now from coming out and he's pouted a little bit on the sideline same thing with running backs just give the guy if he gets a hot hand let him go third down and five. Will fake it to Rainey and Jakes will keep it. No gain on the play and that'll bring up fourth down now and the Kentucky defender stand tall and force upon Danny Trevathan now with double figure tackles. That is 10 straight for Mr. Trevathan. And just picking up where he left off last year. That's amazing. 144 tackles a year ago. Winston guy he was the only other Wildcat to go over 100 tackles he had 106 tackles himself. Hendricks breakfield to punt it away Randall Burden back line drive kick sends Burden back to the 35. There's a flag back at the 35 and a 51 yard kick a couple of flags come out. Mark Curls has gotten in shape tonight. If he wasn't in shape before the season started, he'd been running up and down this field. Busy he night. He's going to need a couple of cough drops as well from announcing these penalties. A couple of different blocks in the back here against Kentucky. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 35. Return team. Ten yards only from the spot of foul. First down. So that'll back the Wildcats up to the 26 yard line. Willie Taggart talking to K1 Jakes, his quarterback. Right here, you see number 35 right there in your screen. That right there is the block in the back that. Through the, uh, the first of the two. official. That's the first of two. <laughs> there goes Clemens, the true freshman. No gain on the play. Boy, Kentucky just, it, they've never had a rhythm offensively. You know how you just kind of, you, you've never yeah. felt like they were comfortable in what they were doing. And you keep waiting on it. Yep, Clemens is the only guy to, to provide a touchdown in the football game, but you keep waiting for Kentucky to break out. Down the middle. Pass is caught. Gene McCaskill down to the 40. And I think Morgan Newton is a quarterback that likes to get the ball down the field, a 34-yard pickup. Well, he's got a big arm and tremendous arm strength. There, Gene McCaskill, the junior wide receiver from Chester, South Carolina, right down the seam and right in rhythm for Morgan Newton. And the, the play action pass, the eyes, and a nice strike to Gene McCaskill. McCaskill missed all of 2010 with a knee injury. Picks up his first catch of 2011. We'll see if that'll get the Cats going when we come back. Fourth quarter football is on the way. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So me and the boys earned a trip to D.C. twice as fast. Oh, hi. We get double miles every time we use our card. And since double miles out of fast, one more chariot, please. We can bring the whole gang. I cannot tell a lie. He did it. 
Right. It's hard to beat double miles. Read my lips. No new access. Get the Venture Card from Capital One and earn double miles on every purchase every day. Go to CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? So you're a Democrat, right? You ready for this? I just signed the whole family up for unlimited mobile to mobile minutes. You're kidding. No. Where's that money coming from, Steve? Did it even cross your mind to ask your wife before signing us up for something so expensive? My mother was right. I should have married John Clark. They were free. I got them when I signed us up for unlimited messaging. Get more value from AT&T. Buy an unlimited messaging plan and call any U.S. mobile phone free. AT&T. We are visitors. Underdogs. Party crashers. Guest in a den of lions. But we will prevail. Because today, we are more than conquerors. Looking for life insurance can feel like a jungle of ifs. If I'll finally get the coverage my family deserves. If it's something we can afford. To steer clear of the confusion, go to MetLife.com. In less than five minutes, you'll get straight answers, like how much life insurance you really need and how much it costs. So no matter where you end up buying, you'll make the best decision for your family. Get guarantees for the if in life from MetLife. Call 1-888-METLIFE for your free quote with no pressure or obligation. Most legroom per dollar of any car in America. The all-new Nissan Versa sedan from 10990. Innovation upsides. Innovation for all. In 1976, a leading NCAA collegiate organization was born. They named themselves the Sun Belt Conference. Brick by brick, year after year, our conference is growing evolving, reaching even greater heights of success. We are steadfast in our achievements. We are the Sun Belt Conference. Some of our highlights here tonight, and it hasn't been pretty for Kentucky offensively, especially in that first quarter. Held to just five yards, but Western Kentucky, though, would cough up the football. An interception by Winston Guy would then lead to this touchdown by the true freshman Josh Clemens would take it from 14 yards out. That would give the Wildcats a 7-3 lead. And other than that, it has been nothing but a punting contest between Ryan Tidlatchka and Hendricks Brakefield. They've done a nice job, both those guys, but not exactly uh, what we were hoping to see. <laughs> the punter has I'm not saying the punter. an opportunity to be the MVP of this football game. How about that? Morgan Newton just completed a pass to end the third quarter. Lofts it up to the side, and it is picked off back at the five-yard line. Darius Brooks with the interception. It was looking for McCaskill, but he just threw up a jump ball, and the Hilltoppers won the battle. Well, you start doing that, and you, you bring in the entertaining of a head coach making a change. You can't just throw the football up and try or hope to make plays. Throw it away, come back on second down. And right here, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage, but if you're going to throw that late, it better be outside, over the outside shoulder of Gene McCaskill. Two very bad decisions by Morgan Newton have resulted in interceptions. Darius Brooks, a very fast cornerback, probably the fastest player on this Western Kentucky football team. That handoff goes to Bobby Rainey. He will take it out to about the eight yard line, give him a gain of three. And well, you're not going to get behind Brooks much. If you do, he can make it up. 4 3 40 speed. He was a 10 300 meter sprinter out of high school in Fortson, Georgia. 
Take a look at our stats and 75 total yards for this Kentucky football team, averaging mm. two yards a play. We thought it would be hard to replace the three playmakers, Hartline, Cobb, and Locke. Starting to prove us right. Play clock down to three. And off to Rainey. This time, he can't make a man miss. Mikey Benton tripped him up. That's six tackles for Benton. Taito Smith not available tonight for Kentucky at that safety spot. Mikey Benton moves up a little bit to play well, outside Ellenson guy, and certainly he's been a big player. Yeah, that's a big tackle by Mikey Benton, the uh, safety. Because if he doesn't make that tackle, that little dip move by Rainey, he's outside, and he's going to pick up the first down, maybe even some more yards, but a big third down here when you talk about third and seven, protecting the football, yet you want to try to convert the first down for better field position. Play clock at two at one, and Jakes will call a timeout. Willie Taggart last year was the offensive coordinator and head coach called the plays this year he's got a run game pass game coordinator everybody involved in the decision making he'll say in this instance for as an example give me a run play here somebody give me a pass play and he will pick one of those two plays if not come up with his own play but not directly calling every single play like he was a year yeah, ago he told me told us that yesterday and I've never been a big fan of that I think you turn offensive coordinator duties over to the offensive coordinator I don't like one guy it takes too long in that instance to get what may have been a run play called or a pass play from a guy now you got to communicate it down and to signal it into the quarterback you let the offensive coordinator call the game and you live or die by one guy I've never been a fan of two guys basically calling a game and splitting it up between run and pass. So the timeout taken by Western Kentucky that's the first time out they have used here in the second half. 13 16 to go in the fourth quarter Bobby Rainey by the way has now eclipsed the 100 yard mark 27 carries 102 yards. Jakes will throw. To the big man out of the backfield to Dean Jones and he has stood up at the 10 yard line only a gain of two and needed to get to the 15 that'll bring up a fourth down situation Ridge Wilson first man there to bring down the big fellow that goes 270 pounds well, they're going to have to once again depend on Hendricks Brakeville to punt him out of some bad field position and he is launched a couple of punts in this football game to save this Western Kentucky football team in terms of field position. I have to do it again. Randall Burden will stand at midfield and flags come down and looks like some movement up front and there once again everybody points to each other. This time the Hilltoppers will back up. Still fourth down. Ball to Burton who drops it can't come up with it finally falls on it back at the 43 yard line that was close to disaster Cam Thomas came flying down almost got his paws on it 43 yard punts Morgan Newton has completed just five passes tonight can he get it going for this Wildcats Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. 
made with real ingredients cooked right in, or flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Let's see if we can get one past the defense. Hut, go! Here it comes! Run the numbers, boom! Get it, spin! Whoa. Oh, nice hands! Check them. Oh, <laughs> good job, man. Nice. Okay, halftime. Now this is my favorite play. Oh! I'm wide open. I won't fumble. fumble. Don't want to fumble any of these. Share what you love with who you love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is up. And it's good. Good. They're great. What happens when you use peak motor oil? You get premium performance and can save up to 10 gallons of gas every time you change your oil. So any car runs like a 10, even if it's more like a six. You're not just changing oil, you're saving gas. Put peak motor oil in, save on gas. The Wildcats stuck on seven points. They had a touchdown run from the freshman Josh Clemens, but everybody's waiting for Morgan Newton to get it going, Andre. Kind of break out. This was a, on the first or early in the game, then stumbles backwards. The ill advised interception over the middle. And see him here go late down the sideline, throw this one outside. And he throws it inside. It gets picked up by Darius Brooks. Tough night. For Morgan Newton. Yeah. Hardline, Locke, Cobb averaged over 200 yards a game, three and a half touchdowns. The, the new triumvirate of Newton, Sanders, and King have yet to do anything tonight in a big collision at the line of scrimmage. But Raymond Sanders got hammered by who else but Andrew Jackson and Ramel Lewis also in on that play. But here we go. Oh, Andrew Jackson, when he shows up, it's it's nothing nice. <laughs> Eleven tackles and two for tackles for a loss and a sack for Andrew Jackson tonight. Here's Sanders out into Western Kentucky territory. Give him eight. That'll bring up a third down and two. Xavius Boyd with the tackle. Talk about, talk about Andrew Jackson. He was a, replaced an all Sunbelt linebacker in Thomas Major, who led the team in tackles and tackles for a loss last year. And he's stepping in as a first year starter and is off to a pretty good start for Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky had Sanders for a three yard loss. Andrew Jackson yeah. came flying in and just couldn't corral the sophomore tailback out of Stone Mountain and the Wildcats pick up that first down. Yeah four met four. And the four in the white jersey able to get a little bit lower and avoid the tackle of Andrew Jackson and pick up a Kentucky first down big time. First down for Kentucky in terms of momentum. Move the chains. 10 40 to go in the fourth quarter. Newton overthrows his intended target, DJ Warren. And, you know, that's what uh, Randy Sanders was telling us that they were really working with Morgan Newton on the past 12 months. And that is his touch. Yeah. He's got a big arm, but you got to make those throws. Big guys want to gun everything, and you, you spend more time throwing, making throws down the field than just hitting the little touch routes right here. Just square it up and just touch it in there. And you see the velocity. Even if, even if it's down lower, it's going to be tough for DJ Warren to come up with that reception. A little stronger throw to the outside. Pass yeah. caught by Brian Adams, the sophomore receiver. 
Out of coming Georgia brought down by Darius Brooks a gain of five. There's the difference right there where there's no thought no touch. He just basically hits her out on the outside raise up and shoot it out there. Those are the throws that he's comfortable with those little touch passes to the fullback rolling around. Those are the ones that require a little bit more touch and work for Morgan Newton. Third down and six. Clock at 9.52 and counting here in the fourth. Newton throws a bullet over the middle, batted in the air, and finally picked off by Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers will have the football at the 42-yard line. Jared Clendenden will come up with the interception. I thought Stuart Hines, the offensive lineman, nearly had well, his second reception tonight. Well, he had one, and it was like the kiss of death, like a three-point shooter, a guy that really can't shoot. Making the first one, he keeps on shooting. There, it should have just, he should have knocked it to the turf. It results, it stays in the air because Stuart Hines is trying to catch the football, as you mentioned, a second time. It stays in the air, and Jared Clendenden comes up with the interception. The Hilltoppers with excellent field position. Out of the eye. Jakes will play fake to Rainey and going up top. A lot of bumping on that far sideline and no flag. And with 9.33 to go here in the fourth quarter, it is still a hot, hot night, and it's beginning to have an effect on Kentucky. Kara? I have seen at least five defensive starters getting iced back here during this half. Martavius Nellums, Winston Guy, Danny Trevathan, Ridge Wilson, Taylor Windham, all the guys that need to step up for Kentucky right now have been cramping and hurting, Dave. Well, Western Kentucky has run 13 more plays than Kentucky here tonight. Well, I'll tell you a little story here after Western runs this play. Second down and 10. Hand off to Rainey. Chase down at the 45 yard line gain of three. We had a guy when I was playing at the University of Houston all he did was watch the sideline and who subbed in for who. When a guy would go to the sideline as Karen described to for cramps and he comes back in the game guess who I'm throwing it. Yeah they get in my ear along the side hey such and such is checked out or we may run another receiver a fresh guy in just to go at that guy who's who's going to the sideline with cramps are coming back in. Loved it. Third down and six. Ball sits on the 46. Jake's under pressure. Rolls out trying to make a play. Gets to the 49. He'll be three yards shy. Gain of three on the play. Well, this is right around the 50 yard line and it may be go for it time for Western Kentucky getting around just under eight and a half minutes left in this ballgame. I kind of like this decision. Now here comes the punt team. But he's changed his mind on it. Hendricks Brakefield will step on to the surface and punt it away as we close it on eight minutes to go here in the contest. This will sail into the end zone. And the Wildcats will bring it out to the 20. Hasn't been pretty, but it certainly has been close. 7.56 to play here in Nashville. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by Wagner Thermo Quiet Brake Pads. Save up to $50 now. Go to TQFallBlitz.com for details. And Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. Artists are inspired by color. So are our engineers. Wagner Thermo Quiet Brake Pads. Brakes without compromise. We're in the mood for amazing seafood tonight. Pan seared just for us. Anybody? You know, sizzling shrimp and scallops. Perfectly seared tilapia made to order. On an all-you-can-eat dinner buffet. For around 10 bucks. Heads up. Holy 
Great Golden Corral would serve up endless made-to-order pan-seared seafood. It's incredible shrimp, tilapia, and scallops with your choice of amazing sauces. All on our endless dinner buffet, still for around 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Bam! Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. It only took two minutes for this town to be destroyed. To a little girl who lived through it, this is more than a teddy bear. It's a step towards normal. It's why all state catastrophe teams not only have hot coffee and help for grown-ups, they've also handed out more than 12,000 teddy bears to kids. People come first. Everything else is second. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? Now it's time for a one of a kind part. Are you Team Palmer or Team Pollock? Jesse Palmer and David Pollock take an inside look at the most anticipated stories and matchups in college football. He consistently does a great job developing players. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. All day, baby. All day. SEC boys. SEC. They post me SEC. That's Andrew Jackson, middle linebacker out of Lakeland, Florida, sophomore. <laughs> 11 tackles tonight. He's had a huge game. You asked uh, the coaches in our meetings, you said, who, who's the one guy you really anxious to see? And, and everybody said, that guy. First year Four. starter, Andrew Jackson. He has played a whale of a game. Kentucky at the 20, handed off left side, and maybe a yard for Sanders. Andrew Jackson is a guy we talked to Willie Taggart for a long time about Andrew and he said Andrew's really never had a father figure in his life just seemed like an unhappy guy and he was trying to crack through that shell and he said one day he saw him walking through campus on his phone and he started laughing and he immediately stopped the car coach Taggart gets out says I want to know who you're talking to I want to know who made you smile he said I'm just talking to my mama and he said right then I knew the young man had a heart and I knew I could get to him yep. and he said he's been smiling the last couple of months you can get through most guys through the mom. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> first charge timeout, Kentucky. Timeout, Kentucky. That'll be their first. 7 18 to play. Kentucky holding on to a four point lead. Back in a moment. Evangel Christian Battles Union, tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Running backs don't stand in line. We run through them, especially when Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong. <laughs> Nike Pro Combat. I forgot my wallet, Steven Jackson. Take every advantage. Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong at Dick's Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking Bush beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? Introducing the official training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TDM, the first ever indoor training bike that delivers everything you demand. A 20% incline and a 20% decline, so you'll experience exactly what the road does. Because it's powered by Google Maps, you choose the road and the TDF follows it. Every incline and decline, so no matter what comes at you, you'll be ready. The Proform TDF automatically adjusts resistance, incline and decline. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll know your exact output. You decide where to go, and the official training bike of the tour takes you there. And now that you've decided, we're ready to deliver. 
Order right now and get zero down and a free upgrade on Rush Shipping. Call the number on your screen or go online today. Western Kentucky hanging around, but they do not have the football. Andrew Jackson in this defense trying to shut down the Wildcats. It's second down and nine. Ball sits at the 21. 7-18 to go in the game. Little end around. DeMarco Robinson loses five on the play. The true freshman out of Ellenwood, Georgia, had nowhere to go, and... Arius Wright with a big play from his corner position to step up and make the tackle. Yeah, he's got outside contain and he's got to come up off the edge. Little slot sweep here, going nowhere. And you see 21 turning it back inside, taking on the block of Jordan R. Miller. And that forced DeMarco Robinson to halt all that speed. Third down and 14. Newton has some running room, has a lot of running room. Still on his feet. Morgan Newton down to the 30 and tripped up at the 26-yard line by Arius Wright. A huge gain on third down and 14. Give Newton 58 large yards. As bad as it's been for Morgan Newton, a nice play when his team had to have it third down and long and a couple of missed tackles but a great block by Jordan R. Miller the tight end is really going to free up Morgan Newton right there in the middle of the screen for a huge huge run and Kentucky to the line quickly on first down and 10 they'll hit Sanders off the right side he's dropped Vontarius Smith from the defensive end position makes that tackle. Boy, and really Joe Murphy, the right tackle for Kentucky, getting up limping a little bit. That offensive line has seen its share of bumps and bruises tonight. Came in a little bit gimpy, and they are gutting it out right now. The big guys up front for Kentucky. Wildcats had 90 plus yards until that 58 yard run by Morgan Newton. Play clock at zero, and here comes the flag. Our back judge, delay of game. Delay of game, number 12, offense. Andre. Five yard penalty. It's been bad. Penalties. It just, you know, it's been a bad football game for Kentucky. It's, and in certain instances for Western as well, when you talk about the missed opportunities. But now you're you're basically going in to kick a field goal here, or you could play for that and force, really force the hand of Western Kentucky to have to go the length of the field. Now you may take yourself out of field goal range. Josh Clemens in the backfield. Newton will throw. Going to the end zone, has a man. Touchdown, Kentucky. LaRod King, 31 yards. Forget what I just said. <laughs> oh, what a well-thrown football. That one just dropped right out of the sky for Morgan Newton. You guys have been behind Arius Wright in this ball game, and it finally came back to haunt. Western Kentucky taking a peek in the backfield a little bit too long. Was Arius Wright. Morgan Newton goes 58 yards on a run on third down and 12 from the 16 yard line. Just when Western Kentucky thought they had a chance. Well, it's the long run of Morgan Newton. First and foremost, a 58 yarder picks up a nice block by Jordan A. Miller right here and then the long pass down the sideline to LaRod King in the corner of the end zone big time plays from Kentucky that has him up 14 3. I don't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm looking at it and I, I don't believe it. How did you I mean if you're here and at least we have Farm Bureau insurance.
Because there's one in every county, Kentucky Farm Bureau agents have seen, well, almost everything. Your mother always said you were gifted. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. We'll be here if you get off early. Is he working the late shift again? Yep. Hey, you made it. Power outage. That's the third one this week. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Oh, that was my boss. Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Are you Team Palmer or Team Pollock? Jesse Palmer and David Pollock take an inside look at the most anticipated stories and matchups in college football. He consistently does a great job developing players. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. Morgan Newton tapping the head of former Kentucky great Andre kiss. Woodson. A little kiss on the back of the head. Sometimes you just got to. You struggle as a quarterback. You got to go to somebody that's been there, that struggled themselves. And what better guy to go to than Andre Woodson, who played right there at Kentucky? He knows the pressures of playing quarterback at Kentucky. Look at the first 12 drives, just 96 yards. That last drive, <laughs> five plays and 80 yards. And that guy right there did it pretty at a pretty good level. He Andre could sling Woodson, it with the was, best of them. He was awesome. You know, it. it there's no question, Andre, from what I've seen tonight of Morgan Newton, when he throws the ball down the field 15 yards and further, he is a much better quarterback, I think. Some nice moves by Brooks out to the 24 yard line. On Saturday morning, nobody gets you ready for a full day of college football better than ESPNU. Beginning at 9 Eastern, Aaron Andrews hosts the first hours of college game day built by the Home Depot. And at 10, catch a special college football version of Sports Nation. And finally at 11, get the latest news and updates from all the big game sites on college football whip around. College football lives here on ESPNU. You know, you, you talk about throwing the football and how he's better throwing it down the field. Sometimes if you're servicing and Hartline got all the, the good reps last year so to speak when you're working with the scout team and throwing against the defense they just want the football out you tend to develop some bad habits every once in a while Vasquez finally gets his first catch of the night that's a gain of 10 clocks at 420 stop for a moment and I say that Dave not in a bad way but the deep the defensive coordinator he wants the football out so his guys can make a play on it and you don't work on things like touch and a, you know throwing over a linebacker's head. Vasquez again with a catch. This one out over the 40 to the 43. That's a gain of eight. Like you look at day one Jake's here much more comfortable out of the shotgun where he spent the majority of his young career. Wayne. Jake's seven out of 20 throwing the football will keep it on the ground here. He's into Kentucky territory. That'll be a hilltopper first down. Give him nine. Danny Trevathan now with his 13th tackle. And Trevathan is sucking some wind right now. Folks, when we kicked it off at 8.15 Central Time, it was 94 degrees. And they see that they've got a tired defense. And Joker Phillips and his staff going to take a timeout to get a rest. Andre, you talked about this being a must-win situation for Joker Phillips. 
and his team based on this schedule and here's a look at that schedule. You look at it next week Central Michigan. Who put a whipping on South Carolina State tonight 21 6 and then you got Louisville who won tonight Florida LSU South Carolina. That is murder's row in terms in terms of a schedule. Doesn't get any easier down the stretch either. Mississippi State going to be a great football team this year. I think we're going to do a lot of talking about the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. And don't overlook Jacksonville State like Ole Miss did a year ago. That's a good point. <laughs> Well, obviously here with 3.30 to play, Western Kentucky's got to move this down in a hurry. They're going to need two touchdowns. Touchdown and two-point conversion, and then a field goal perhaps, but they got to do something here, and Vasquez had his man beat by a step. Anthony Mosley. But Vasquez did not turn his head around in time to look for the football. A lot of people felt like this Western Kentucky football team would be improved this year because of the recruiting job that Willie Taggart has done, bringing in better talent. And they're going to be in ball games now. They've got to figure out a way to close and win those football games that they're close in. Jakes over the middle pass is intercepted. Martavius Nellums flag comes in late but that should seal the deal and the Wildcats look like they'll survive what was a not so great effort offensively and get yep. out of here with a win every team at some point in a season Dave they're going to have an ugly game where you don't know why there's so many penalties. You don't know why there's so many turnovers. But if you're able to overcome all the mistakes and penalties and still win a football game, it's all kind of worth it. And you just get better. This Kentucky football team will look better, a lot better next week against Central Michigan than it did tonight. And that's winning a football game. You know what? I'd rather win ugly any day of the week than going out of here uh, uh, with a loss. Here's Sanders working the right side, and does he stay in bounds? Yes, he does. Talk about some missed opportunities for Western Kentucky. Marcus Vasquez down the. On a corner route, that one should have hit for a touchdown. Jack Doyle, that one's missed. At that point, it's probably 17 14. You tack on two touchdowns at this point for Western Kentucky. They'll go back, study the film, see the missed opportunities, and try to take advantage of them or get better because of them going forward. 111 total yards here in the fourth quarter for Kentucky. For the evening, they have 176. 58 of those yards by Morgan Newton on a run on third down and 14 from the 16 yard line. He drops back to pass, sees a seam, and runs 58 yards. It just felt like something big was going to happen in the ball game. And then lo and behold, Morgan Newton breaks a 58 yarder. To set up a nice touchdown pass in the corner of the end zone to Larod King. But at that point, you just felt like something one way or the other was about to happen. Under two minutes to play. False start against Kentucky. Before the snaps. Ball starts, number 67, offense, five yard penalty, second down. When well, you're not going to be able to sell Willie Taggart on a moral victory that you played a, a Kentucky football team or an SEC opponent close all the way into the fourth quarter, he wants to win these types of football games. You got to hold it together. Defense played an outstanding game for a long time offensively, they got some things to fix. 
Here's Sanders. Stays in bounds. Gain of four. Of course, big day on Saturday. So many great football games. And some good ones on ESPNU beginning at noon Eastern. You can catch Northwestern and Boston College. How about 3.30 Eastern? The Seminoles rank sixth in the country and bark on their 2011 campaign against Louisiana Monroe. Florida Gators get underway at 7 Eastern against FAU and then at 10.30 Eastern. Alcorn State Grambling get it going and wrap up a busy day of football on ESPNU. Nice lineup for Saturday. I'm anxious to get a look at that Seminole offense. E.J. Manuel. Oklahoma heads to Tallahassee week three. That's after a bye week. Next week, they Tulsa football team, they, they, they're going to have a pretty good year as well down at Tulsa. That's who they open. They open up with the Sooners. G.J. Kinney throwing it around for Tulsa. He can move the football around, that's for sure. 19 starters coming back for Tulsa this year. With all that being said, they face the number one team in the nation in the Oklahoma Sooners. Of course, Oklahoma ranked number one. You have to go back to 2004 to see a team go wire to wire. That was. The USC Trojans Alabama there at two but Oregon and LSU three and four they will square off in Cowboys Stadium a lot of talk about the Aggies as of late they will depart the Big 12 and make their way into the SEC if, if uh, it's provided the balls voted that's what they'd like to do no game Josh Clemens Nowhere to go, and that'll bring up fourth down and 11. Well, you got to take your hat off to this defense of, of Western Kentucky and, and Lance Gidry, who we had a chance to talk and visit with him yesterday, and a great personality, good motivator, and his guys played their hearts out, just couldn't put enough points on the board uh, for Kentucky. And then on the flip side, there, there's going to be some. Some uh, tough love going on at the campus of Kentucky this week with this football team and Joker Phillips. Yeah, they're going to get out of here with a win tonight, but he is a long way from being satisfied with how his football team played this evening. They'll get better this week in practice and have a better showing against Central Michigan next week. Western Kentucky just used their final timeout with 90 seconds left and fourth down and 11. Kentucky will just try to burn a few seconds off here and maybe give the football back to Western Kentucky and say good luck. Morgan Newton will take the snap. He will throw it going to the end zone and it's incomplete so the Hilltoppers will get the football back at the 32 yard line. Why not throw it to the if they pick it off. Well you're in the end zone I, and it's I think if you run the football Western Kentucky out of timeouts at this point you run more clock off off the the, uh, the clock you throw an incomplete pass. Now you're giving them time to go down and, and score. Don't understand that play call. If you're trying to get out of a football game with a 14 3 win, that's not the way to do it. Well, the clock's going to stop on the change of possession well, anyway. You, you leave me time with a minute 23 down by 11, and I'll show you a bunch of people that's been beaten that way. Well, they were just giving the ball back right here if they didn't gain any yards. Clock. But how much time would run off on a running play? Seven seconds went off that play. You run a bootleg with a quarterback. You might eat up 10, 12 seconds, depending on how long it takes. That's 10 or 12. That's an extra play or two, right? Here's Jake's. He's dropped at the line of scrimmage. No game. Under a minute. 
Western that's Kentucky. A, that's a learning point right there for K1 Jakes. Nothing there. You're out of timeouts. Either throw it away or get out of bounds. You cannot, you can never assume that the game is over. Bobby Rainey, 28 carries, 105 yards. And lets that one go through his hands. Incomplete with 34 seconds left to play. Rainey went for 184 against the Wildcats last year. And here's why I say that, Dave. You hit a big play, it goes for six. You onside kick, you get it. Now you just need a field goal. Or actually, I'm sorry, two scores. You and then maybe you hit another big play. You never know in a football game or a two point conversion and then you just need a field goal to go down and tie it to force overtime. Come on, yo, you got to always think about winning. Jakes that pass is caught to Vasquez. He'll step out of bounds. Gain of 13 on the play. Vasquez became a factor here late in the game. Was a little frustrated through the first three quarters but has three catches. Here late tonight. Western Kentucky and Kentucky will play again next year. They'll go back to Lexington. And then the fourth and final game of that series that they've signed will be back here at LP Field back in 2013. It'll be a Western Kentucky home game once again. Jakes dumps it off to Rainey, and that's incomplete, but a flag down a hold against Western Kentucky. And here's the issue under a minute now a penalty. You can take 10 seconds and the penalty if you want. I don't see why Joker Phillips wouldn't in this instance. <laughs> it's exactly right. Give me <laughs> holding number 77 offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Here's the end off, well, handoff to Rainey, the fake to him, and Jakes will take it to the 40. Jakes. No time on the clock, just heaves it up in the air, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Winston Guy. His second interception tonight. So for Joker Phillips, they will get out of here and take the win. It was not pretty. They went at 14 to 3. Willie Taggart, his club played valiantly, but not enough tonight to take down the Wildcats. Morgan Newton saves the day with a 58 yard run late in the fourth quarter on a third down and 14 from the 16 yard line five straight opening season wins for the Wildcats. They go to one and oh Western Kentucky will drop to zero and one. Once again our final score Wildcats win it 14 to 3 stay tuned coming up next on ESPN you at sports interview. This has been a presentation of ESP and the worldwide leader in sports for Andre Ware Kara Capuano and our entire crew. I'm Dave Neal saying so long everybody from Nashville Tennessee.